We'll start a prayer and a pledge led by Council Member Keaton Fish. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Heavenly Father, we just come before you tonight uh, thankful for the community of Godders and thankful for the decisions that will be made uh, here tonight. Lord, I pray that you would just bless uh, each and every decision that's made, God. Let it be uh, intentional and what is absolutely right for the future of our city. Uh, it's in your gracious name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Item E, C, approval of the agenda we have to add. Then uh, item H1. H11. H11, sorry. Um, uh, that's the MIH resolution of support. Do I have a motion to amend? Motion, motion by Sarah. A second. Second by Aubrey. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Item D, citizen comments. Is there anybody from the audience that would like to come up and speak? Come on up. Hello, how are you guys this evening? Good, how are you? Uh, my name is DJ Wilson. I am the president of A Production Company, LLC, which produces the DM Jam that's happening out at Lake Afton. I wanted to just take a minute today, and this is Christina. She's kind of my, uh, how would I say, Goddard liaison. She helps me kind of figure out who people are. She's been a great help. Um, uh, what we're wanting to do is, of course, we're having a lake event, and this lake event will happen on July 21st and 22nd at Lake Afton. We have 10 different bands. It is a very large lineup. We have people like William Clark Green, El King, um, Cadillac 3, Lanco, oh goodness, uh, there's so many, Yellow Wolf, so there's a lot of great bands coming, and we've worked very hard. It truly is a labor of love, but what I wanted to tell you a little bit about is who we are. Um, some people do confuse us with the Past Dam Music Festival. We are not the same organization or the same people. Um, what our goal is is to raise tourism in the state of Kansas. We're ranked number 46 in this country right now, and our goal is to raise that up. I cannot build an ocean or a mountain, but I can throw a really great party. So um, I don't know if you guys have heard of Nation of Patriots, which is kind of where Goddard will become heavily involved with this. Um, Nation of Patriots is uh, nonprofits. We open uh, nonprofits to have three to four different um, nonprofits involved. They get to use our platform, Nations of Patriots, one of those where they're passing the flag across the country to all 50 states to raise money for veterans. They've actually given back about $83,000 to people from Kansas needing help. So we have teamed up with them and they're actually doing a parade to the flags to come out um, and pass that through at our event and we're very excited to have, be a part of that. Um, secondly, one thing I wanted to mention is that it's very important about what we are doing and how it affects Goddard is a big deal. Um, when Country Stampede had their event, it increased their um, area, their revenue, their economy by eight to nine million a year. And that is our goal. We want to be able to ingest that into our county, into our area, and that's a big deal. Another thing to keep in mind is every single one of these big bands says Goddard, Kansas on them as the location. So you are probably going to be pretty inundated with a lot of people, especially with 10,000 coming to the lake. Um, we will not have motorboats on the lake. We will be a, a float party, but we won't be having motorboats. We do allow camping and a concert, and we have cornhole tournaments and a beach party, and it's gonna be a great time. And we just wanted to take a moment to say hello, introduce ourselves to you guys, and then also let you know that we do put information in bags to all 300 of our campers. Um, if that's something that there's businesses in town, if they would like to put, I know Christina's talked to people about putting things on their sign. Um, Walmart has been embracing our event heavily and going to be doing some special things. So we just want you guys to know that we want to embrace you, and if there's anything that we can do to be a part of the community, I know we've signed up for some chamber events and things like that, but if there's something that we can do to be a part of Goddard, we want to be and we also want Goddard to be a part of us. Um, you're obviously going to be getting a lot of promoting and advertising because every band says Goddard, Kansas, does not say Wichita. So um, I would love for you all to go to our website at thedamjam.com. Take a look at it. I gave you some little flyers there that kind of give you information. Um, there is an opportunity for people that want to volunteer. They can attend the event free. Um, and we just want us to be a community together that we can make a big difference. I've been born and raised in Kansas. I've done festivals all over 
the nation, and one of my biggest goals is bringing one here to Kansas. So hopefully we can make this happen, and I appreciate your time. Do you have anything to add in case I missed something? I don't think so. I mean, Nation of Patriots, noon, Friday. Yes, good times. Come out and have fun with us. So, and if anybody on the city council does want to attend, we will get you your tickets, and we invite you to please come out and see us and kind of see what we're building out there. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What was your name again, Mel? C.J. Wilson. It's short for Carrie Jane. <laughs> Is there anybody else? So I have a couple of materials I'd like to hand out to the council as well. I was unable to get the uh, materials on the big screen, so I just went ahead and printed them out. Okay, good evening ladies and gentlemen. My name is Matthew Smith and I'm the owner and operator of Knuckles Automotive Service located at 705 North Goddard Road. I come before you to speak about the recent construction project at 213 East 6th Street and 209 East 6th Street. The construction is for a storage unit facility and the part in question is stormwater mismanagement. I was recently at my business on May 14th and observed that the rain had caused flooding onto my property located at 705 North Goddard Road. It would, it, flooding occurred at the south end of my business. If you look at the first sheet there that I passed out, the yellow portion is where the flooding occurred. The water from the rains have never caused this problem before the construction of a storage unit facility. There has been discussion in the past month or so about these conditions between me and other city officials. One interaction has been a discussion between me and the owner of the property. The summary of one of the discussions led to the discovery that the plans were not followed to spec and that the concrete pad that was poured in replacement of the ditch that was previous, previously existing was not pitched correctly nor sunk into the ground low enough for water to travel its original path. The failure caused a lip be made of concrete that is higher than the existing ground level. A combination of this lip and the pitch of concrete and earth has caused the water to shed from the north of the new storage building driveway. The new concrete ditch is the yellow por or the blue portion on the first page. The water that once flowed from north to south now has nowhere to go and is pulling behind my building and traveling to the corner of my building and parking lot on the south of the side of the building. The owner of the storage unit proposed that since the concrete was already in place, he could pour a lip onto my property to flow water. But I declined this offer as it would not change the water flow and would be construction on my property at a working business. The discovery of the problem was brought up before with city officials Further construction proceeded, but the work uh, so was brought up with city officials before, but the construction continued to proceed. Uh, now a fence exists with the incorrect stormwater management. I presented these facts today to say that the construction project that my neighbor has built has caused flooding onto my business's property and that the cause of this is an incorrectly followed plan for stormwater management. I'm at the risk of flooding every time it rains and at the risk of deterioration of my property and the impeding of my business, which is my and employees' livelihood. I ask the city council to take these matters seriously as what is done here sets precedence for what will be done in the future. If a plan is laid out and the plan is not followed, then we must hold those that did not follow it accountable for their actions. And swift action is needed to be taken when the result will be property damage and loss for a business in the local community. I ask that the council work to correct the draining issue swiftly and with oversight from the city to ensure this action is corrected in the right way and not just what is convenient. Thank you for your time and consideration and all you do for the city of Goddard and its community. 
I hope we can reach a resolution on this matter before any irreversible damage is done. Micah, is this the item we spoke about earlier? Yes. So the developer and or builder are aware of the situation? Yes. They did not follow what the city said? This Correct. This is what you're required to do? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what ability, because this they didn't follow what the city said, mm -hmm. but I understand it can be a private civil matter. What can we do to make sure they do what what they were instructed to do? So typically, it is a, this is an interesting situation because typically, like I, like you mentioned, it would be a civil matter if one individual uh, did something on their improved their property in such a way to impact another property. Typically, we'd say that's a civil matter. What's unique about this is that there's an easement there. We have a, a storm uh, easement in that area, stormwater easement. And so easements are on private property. And I'm sorry, this is, it gets convoluted, but easements are on private property, but there's infrastructure in that easement that can be privately owned or owned by the city. It can, it can be owned by Evergy or AT&T or Idea Tech or the city in this case. And so we have an easement there. And so when somebody wants to improve that easement, they have to follow certain engineering guidelines and they failed to do that. So there was an approved engineering plan in place, and the contractor started to in implement that plan, and obviously construction was <coughs> happening at the same time, and then the final result of that plan was a, a failed enactment of the engineering standard. And so we reached out to the concrete firm, that the concrete contracting company, to say, hey, you messed up, you know, and not only that, but we also reached out to the developer and said, hey, the person you paid messed up. And so at this point, what we are doing is we're working with the developer and the concrete contractor and public works and the city engineer to rectify the situation expeditiously, but also correctly, because we don't want to rush something that could be in a permanent down the road and still be a failure. So we need to address the situation because we can't really put band-aids on a situation once it's been engineered correctly if it's not implemented correctly we can't just keep stacking uh, poorly contrived engineering standards on top of it so um you know i may have misspoken on this but uh, harlan's on my right he's city engineer brooke bandberg's public works director we are working very in depth with the developer and we're going to try to mitigate this to make sure it's done correctly. Okay. And there's two issues, of course. There's Knuckles Automotive, but there's also Johnson's that has an issue as well. And so these are two separate... Yeah, yeah. there they are. And so th those are two separate projects that we have to remedy. Remedy, okay. Yeah, so we have to work with the remedy. You, Go for it. So when I spoke to you earlier about mm -hmm. talking to Legale, Legale, what was his... Did, was he aware of the problem? Yeah, so he was aware of the problem, and I don't know if he was aware to the extent of the problem, because I called him and left him a voicemail, and he called me back and said, oh, I'm working with Barber Engineering, which he is, and City Engineer, which he is, to help remedy the problem, but the bigger overall problem is, is, is that they're mostly aware of is Knuckles, but they're not necessarily as aware of the issue that's coming from Johnson, which is the fact that they built that lip up and it's blocking water from actually going into the ditch. Mm -hmm. And it sounds so, like it's pretty simple though. We had our specs, mm -hmm. Harlan, correct, and the contractor didn't build it right. to that's where. The, that's the bottom line. We yeah. had an approved plan back in November. Yeah. And then he had his contractor go out there, uh, unbeknownst to us, I mean, not that he necessarily needed to notify us when he was gonna go to work, but right. he went out and built a, a liner in this concrete ditch that was not to this plan and the, the engi their engineer even said, this was not to my plan. Right. And so we're now trying to figure out how to remedy this. I have talked to Chris Bone, the, the engineer for the developer, and he had, I think, met with this gentleman and talked about putting a, an inlet in an area which would intercept this water that he is saying comes from the north that, so that it would go into a storm sewer and wouldn't, uh, wouldn't flow and on into his building. So that is something that, uh, uh, has been discussed and they are proposing to do that. They were gathering some more information on how deep the storm sewer is uh, to, to determine, hey, would this, would this plan work? That was, that was as recently as April 26th. I don't, know if, I don't believe they've built that yet, but there is a plan to resolve that. But yes, the, the lift that he talks about is that the contractor 
essentially laid a form on the ground and poured concrete to it so it sticks up six inches above existing ground and blocks water. Eight inches. Eight inches. Okay. Eight inches. Okay. And okay. and and so that that's another uh, problem to resolve. Okay. okay. So I guess pretty simple. The contractor didn't do his job. Right. And so what we need to figure out, I guess, Ryan is what is the city's role in enforcing this? Is there is there any power that we have over this situation? I think this is largely a private dispute between neighboring landowners. Um, certainly, it sounds like we have been involved from the standpoint that we do have infrastructure in that area, and so we have an interest in ensuring that the developer does things according to the original plans. I think that would be the scope of our legal obligations. Mr. Mayor, I might say we, we have not accepted what's out there as it stands now. We, we have the ability, I think, because they built this in our easement, according according to the plan we approved. I mean, we have not approved or accepted that, in my opinion. And yes, they went in and probably the next the week after we met, put a fence up. Yeah. You know, that further complicates things. So, so we don't accept it, Ryan, and we still have control of it, right? Well, if they, if they built in, in our easement, we've got the right to tear it down. I mean, that. That's their risk if they if they approach in our easement. If we feel then that we've got a need, we've got the right to tear it down. Okay. So where my property is, they are less than five foot away from my building. It is eight inches above where the ditch was. Um, when they started to pour the concrete, I asked them to stop, but it was not right. They continued to pour the concrete. I had, at the end of my concrete, I had concrete sloughs that went into the ditch that drained my property. This weekend when it rained, I was out with an air hose and broom sweeping the water away from my building so that it did not flood. If, um, if it rains any harder than it did this we're weekend, in trouble. I'm going to sandbag. I'll be putting sandbags I have no I too. have no ability to get in there and sand that. Okay. Mine's already concreted. So what's our next step as a city? What are we doing next? I think we need to get with the engineer and the uh, developer as well okay. and explain to them that the uh, the channel concrete channel lining that they've installed is not gonna work and it needs to be taken down to where Per the, per the original plan, right. it said the grade would match the ground at the existing property line. That way their water can continue to come over into the ditch. The developer, your neighbor, should be, to be honest with you, so this isn't like some feud. Right. The developer yeah. should be just as upset as and you he, guys he's because he's the upset, contractor but didn't there's been do nothing the job. Done. Okay. So I know the bottom of the, of the slough is supposed to be level with the ground. Okay. And we're eight inches. So all of the water that normally flows through that sluice is backed up okay. on the side of my building. Okay. Can you put a time stamp on their response? You will they they yes. have to respond to so many days or because aren't they violating I mean, basically the agreement that was set forth? It's not a, really an agreement, though. It's an engineering standard. Yeah. That's not a development agreement. There's not really a time stamp. I'm not sure. I mean, it, it's an engineering plan, and I guess we can. I don't know. We can write them a letter or something to insist that they have, you know, have this reconstructed according to the approved plan by such and such a time. If we can do that. Because if they would have poured that where that hill started, it would have been. Right. That was the intent all along. That's the plan we approved, yeah. is that the water from the adjacent properties would flow into the river. Yeah. And there's, so this morning there was water, probably that much water, there are on the dish inside of my building. There was this much water in this much of that slough. So there was not much water in that slough at all. So what happens if we don't approve the plan? So the options would be we vacate the easement and say the city has nothing to do with this easement anymore. It's a private easement. It's no longer a public easement. 
we don't want anything to do with it, this is a civil matter. But or we say, based on what limitations we have or what we're allowed to do by law and by engineering standards that you guys have to fix it or we're not going to accept it and you need to fix it. And in which case, I think the recommendation has been made that they need to cut that flume down and put riprap so that Johnson's can flow over the property line into the ditch like it's supposed to and in any mitigation that needs to happen in terms of engineering and construction north of this property in that open field to help mitigate the pooling of the water by knuckles. Harlan, do you agree? Um, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't necessarily agree that we can vacate this public easement because it, it allows water from the south, from down at Cedar and Forth, okay. water to come and flow through this. So we need this <clears throat> easement protected so that that water uh, that's coming from other areas can continue to flow. I mean, we're certainly responsible, the city will be responsible for the maintenance of it once it gets correctly built. So what was, how did the phone call end with Legale after? So I hit his voicemail and he called me back and he hit my voicemail because I was on the phone. With okay. another developer, we need to get him on the phone and tell him, I want to get this done. Be let's get an, a direction on where we're going this week because we don't need another rain and then these poor people get flooded. So, and and I can't imagine Mr. Legali is just gonna try to be difficult because he's got a lot of other things going on here in Dyer. So he, he essentially needs to put the pressure on his contractor yes. Yes. To, to build it according to a plan that the city will accept. Yes, okay. I guess I don't have an answer for you right now, but let's get back with you, okay? okay. And thank, thank you for bringing it to our attention and the uh, city's attention because you know that is something that developers, private individuals, everybody needs to be held responsible yeah. for their construction. Like I can't go in my backyard and put up something to block the flow of water into yeah. my neighbor's yard. That's not okay. That's correct. So. Thank you. Yep. Thank is you. there a possibility that we could put this on the next city meeting agenda? Um, we can definitely <coughs> make a discussion item on it. Yeah, we can make a discussion item on it if the like if the problem day. hasn't been resolved. Yeah. That's two weeks from now. Yeah. I want to have a solution to your problem before the next month, yeah. before the next meeting. Okay. So how about let's reconvene on that if we don't have a solution by the next meeting. But there's, yeah. there's, there's also a, a, I'm not sure where that line is either. It's either a civil matter or is it really, what teeth do we really have, right? I mean, if it wasn't a guideline, it was just a guideline, right? Recommendation. We would have to do that from a legal perspective. So, so we need to delve into uh, what Other than does the have. gentleman have a build, uh, uh, occupancy permit or do we? Yeah, he's got a building permit, we get a hold of Hold the occupancy here. permit till it gets fixed. So there's our teeth. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So there's our teeth, yeah. but. And that's not very we, popular. We don't want to, <laughs> we don't want to, we're not a, we're not in the, we don't want to hold things over people's heads, okay? Right. We're all going to get along, we'll get the problem resolved, and we'll move on with our lives. So if you don't okay. bring up the problem, nobody knows you have one. Yep. So I, I yeah, want to bring it up. That's what, think what I went on. I after didn't know you had rain, yeah. Yeah. After this rain, it was like, okay, that's too close. Yeah. And, and it's perfect timing because we just had that big rain and now we know we have a problem, yes. so. Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll be getting back with you. Okay. All right. All right. Thank, you. Thank you guys so much. Do you want your extra one? Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Going once. Going twice. So okay. Moving on. Item E, one, Mayor's Award for May. Keep me on, Marley. Not sure. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. 
we gotta find that slide real fast. Apparently, it got omitted. Oh, Martin. Yeah. Martin's gonna sing us a song real quick. <laughs> Do we need the slide? Yeah. We'll put it up there right now. Are you gonna try some real man? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> If those weren't better, it just means you're old. It's a compliment. Now I know what it feels like. Now I know what it feels like standing here. Okay. So, you're really blind. Jeez. Okay. Um, uh, so I, I wanted to start doing a monthly award for different members of the community that have been put, <clears throat> putting a lot of effort into a lot of things that are going on. We have several members of the community that I think need to be recognized for all of their hard work. You know, we sit up here on the bench and we get credit and we get ridiculed, but we get a lot of credit for things that are going on in Goddard. And I wanted to once a month recognize somebody that was giving back to the community and hasn't been quite recognized. So this month, um, council, staff, and members of the community, on behalf of the city of Goddard, I want to express our deepest gratitude for all of the wonderful work Amanda Treadwell has done for our community. For your tireless efforts and dedication have made a wonderful impact on the lives of so many people in our community. Your work in relocating the community garden and the renovations to the community center have been nothing short but amazing. Your investment of time, energy, and resources into these projects have not gone unnoticed. Your commitment to the community has been truly inspiring and your con contributions have made r a real difference in the lives of so many people here in Goddard. On behalf of the entire community and the city of Goddard, I would like to express my heartfelt thanks for everything that you have done, Amanda. This is my honor to present the Mayor's Award and I am so thankful to have you in this community and all of the hard work that you've put in, into all of the, the projects here in Goddard. Amanda is not here right now, she's ill, but I'm gonna be making a video with her if I can drag her out and I'll present the award to her then. But I wanted to get it done and so hopefully she's paying attention, everybody wave to Amanda. <laughs> and uh, so we'll be seeing her here pretty shortly. So thank you guys. Motion 
by Sarah. Second. Second by Brent. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. I'm approved. We'll move on to item G1. I'm going to step out. Mayor and City Council, this is item G1. This is the cost share discussion for the Goddard Gallery of Public Road Improvement Sewer Main Extension. So, quick background the Goddard Gallery is located west of 183rd Street, north of Prairie Sunset Trail, south of US 54 and east of Crown Drive. This area of development is located inside the Greater Star Bond District, such that any developments that occur within that development help pay off the city's bond obligations with sales taxes and property taxes. More commercial lots are selling inside the Goddard Gallery, and as such, additional roads are required to open up new lots for sale and development. Some of the roads in the Goddard Gallery are public roads and other roads are private. The developer is paying out of pocket for the private roads and the developer is paying $350,000 out of pocket for the improvement of the private drive. For the public roads, which are dedicated to the city, he would like to ask the city council to consider putting in two new public roads with 50% of the cost being allocated to specials and tax assessments and 50% being paid at large without being assessed. This item was discussed on April 17, 2023 and was tabled for further review. Governing bodies discussing the possibility of 50-50 split cost share for the improvement of 6th Street and a portion of Seasons Road inside the Goddard Galleria Star Bond District. Private drive is being paid out of pocket for around $349,000. The cost of the improvements for the public road is $547,000, which includes $55,000 for an extension of the sanitary sewer 200 feet south to avoid paying higher costs for boring. Uh, $273,500 be especially assessed against the commercial lots. $273,500 be paid out large by the city. So the pink area is, is the complete Star Bond District, and that includes everything in this area. The yellow is the Goddard Galleria area. The blue is the private portion that will be paid out of pocket by the developer, and the green is the cost share portion that he would like the city council to consider. There's also that 200 feet of sewer and stuff like Financially, cost improvements will have to be considered as part of the temp note process. Legal consideration of the city council agrees to the proposal. City Bond Council, Kevin Cowan, and City Financial Advisor, Brett Schober, was draft petition to be signed by the developer and the cost of the improvement would have to be considered as part of the technical process. So it is recommended the city council either one, deny the request for the cost share, two, approve the request for the cost share, direct staff to formalize necessary documents, and th or three, table request again for a cost share. So that would just require a voice vote. And at this point, it would be open discussion, deliberation, consideration. Can you go back to that? Yep. So, I mean, the developer is here. Yeah, feel free to come up. Yeah, if you want to reveal any of your trade secrets, you don't have to. Any questions? Yeah. Green, we'll give you your pointer. Awesome. Oh, okay. Uh, the Goddard Gallery is located right here. It's already built. Right. And Starbucks is being built on about two thirds of this lot right now. Uh, and about, we have about two thirds of this lot under contract for a retail urgent care. Business, and that is all that we have so far. So, uh, one thing I was going to say: uh, was Benny Tuberti used to be the top guy here at Wichita for KDOT. We'd have lunch with him, and he'd always go location, location, location. But right after that, he has access, 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 and that's really what we're asking for here tonight: is to uh, the sooner that we can build this road and this it will give another access point into the uh, Goddard Gallery, which is part of the whole Starbond district, to help collect more retail sales tax and for property tax as the improvements are built. And, and also it will 
uh, it will, you know, of course you could get there from Kellogg Drive, but just you have another point of access right into here, and hopefully it will lead them in there and even stay into that district. It will also help alleviate congestion right here at Crown Drive and Kellogg Drive. When I was here last month, one of the residents was saying how congested that point can be. Um, I can only assume after a lot of the events at the baseball or softball facilities. So. With the ARPA that's going in, how will that, this basically the backwards L, the green lines, how will that work into the ARPA? Um, the um, there really won't be any improvements uh, relative to the R cut improvement that will impact. I, I mean, the, the limits of construction pretty well will be ended okay. by the time you get to either of those green lines, I believe. Okay. There might be some work on the frontage road, but it would just a small amount. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm just thinking is because the R cut was approved, how the road is now, and how what what we have in there. Will, could that cause issues with the R-cut? I don't, I don't believe so. I mean, there's a crossover or a median break right there at the west tip of the bottom of the L. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a median break right there already in Crown Drive. <laughs> so uh, I don't think there's any additional construction that the R-cut will be doing that will affect any of this. Mm -hmm. One thing uh, we would also really assume if you guys this, we would immediately go for the design and engineering and get the petitions in place to get construction going. And we would like to do it at the same time. We would correspond to construction to help save costs on those projects for the private and for the public. But with any luck, hopefully this year, yeah, people. Okay. And if we vote no, are you still going to do it? <clears throat> well, I wouldn't do it right away for sure. No, because yeah. we really don't need it. I mean, when you look at this plat, we can, you can get to all of this. And yeah. even, you can even get to everything from our development, really, on Carlisle Drive. Yeah. So, would, it, would I would say that we wouldn't do it? Well, it might just be a long time. And, and I think it would just be good to do it quicker rather than later. I think part of my concern with something like this is what precedent are we setting for future developers? You know, as far as uh, other developments, there's incentives, you know, we want business to come to Goddard for sure, but what are we telling future developers if we help build a road that you just said we don't really need? You know what I mean? That, that's, that's just my personal concern is, is is this thing going to bring 10 people in the next year going, well, you did it for Dugan, you should do it for me too. And then we're dealing with this every three months. Well, I would contend that it would help promote the development in our, develop in our development just because you can get in and out of there quicker or sure. easier in and out of the start line. For sure. But and I would guess that the next person would say the same thing about their development. Well, they might. Well, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't, but, <laughs> but also, I would also, with all due respect, you've done a lot, the city, other city councils have done a lot of the same type of improvements. Yeah, for sure. Problems. For sure. I, well, I get that, but also, um, I don't think we should base all of our future decisions on what the used to do here. Did you have... After the last meeting, you and I spoke, and I kind of mentioned something about maybe splitting it a different way, like assessing 50% to the future businesses, and then you as the developer taking on a chunk, and the city taking on a chunk, so that you had some skin in the game, and um, because, I mean, well, it's hard for me as to take taxpayer money and use it 
for, yes, I want to bring business in and I want that for Goddard, but I also don't want to use taxpayer money to help a developer become more flush, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I, you're a business man, I get that. <coughs> you have to make a profit. Mm -hmm. But it's also, these aren't my dollars. These are our taxpayers' dollars. So we have to take that into consideration. And when we've got the single mom or the single dad or new families starting out and they're struggling to pay their taxes and buy groceries because of inflation or whatever is going on in our economy right now, it's hard for me to take any of that money and use it for that because one, I don't want to raise taxes and two, you know, there's only so much money sitting there <laughs> that we can use for things for the community as a whole. So that's... Yeah, yeah, I, I, I get that. Well, to probably a couple of items on that. Uh, we also, we're going to spend as about 350000 to complete this. It's not, it, I think it'd be maybe a little different to your point if, if you would do this and we didn't complete that. But I think along, we would correspond construction with all of it so it sort of ties it all together and really helps to get one step closer to completing the whole start on district development. Um, the other thing is that you say there's, whole, there's just a certain amount of money there. Well, as businesses come in, and they build, you collect more You collect more property taxes, and the, really the pool of money gets paid. That's true. So, so in that sense, I think you, it would probably have a pretty quick payback overall. Yeah. But I mean, it's a one-time deal, and then after that. Yeah, but at that point, if that's the thinking, then why don't we just assess it all? And well, because, you know what I'm saying? Sure, yes. I, I think my opinion is to do it sooner than later. Yeah. Uh, because we're only maybe right here, right now, and I don't have anything else here. So the quicker you can connect that, I think it would really be better for the star bond for the state and for the city as a whole. Micah, how many roads have we paid for, paid for already in there? Oh, let me see if I remember correctly. Feel free. I've only been here four and a half years, and so some of these projects are beyond me. But Matt and Harlan and Bro, if you guys remember, did we pay for this one? Crown and Grand Santa? Matt? Yes. Yeah, we paid for those ones, I believe, right? Yes. And this is all private here, so this is all paid privately. This is paid privately. So, is that kind of give the answer? The rest of it's okay. There, this road doesn't exist yet. There's nothing out here yet. But this is paid for by the city. And the, and the frontage road was actually built with the KDOT corridor management fund. And we, and I think we dedicated the land to the city, or my father did. Uh, also, uh, to one, one other point for the vice mayor, uh, we do have, we are doing 50% of that on special, so we do have some scanning on it also. That's why I was asking for 50%, not 100%. Right, but that 50% is getting passed along to whoever. Well, as long no. as we sell the lots. Right, yeah. If we're still the owner of those, we will begin to pay those yeah. specials. Which we're willing to take the, the risk on half, because I think if the city pays half, we're willing to take the uh, risk on the other half, thinking that it will be done in a quicker time frame. Now the dark blue, that blue is already done? It is not done. Oh, it's not done at all? It is not done. No. You're going to do that? We will do that. <clears throat> so this is going to make the property so fast? Absolutely. It's just easier. There's just, it's sometimes almost impossible to sell anything until you have all of the points of access for the, for the companies coming in. Uh, for example, like reason we built this back in 2016 was because Brahms wanted us to build it so they didn't have their back road, back access points. And so uh, we did, and then of course now we got to start, I got two more contracts right now. And it does take a while, but it takes a while to get those, but I couldn't even, I don't believe I could even get those until I had that, that drive there. So how did the Brahms ask you to do that? Was there an incentive to do that 
for you? Well, we did it because they were buying from us. And then also it led into the other lots being ready to sell. Would you and think that a potential new tenant on uh, one of those lots there could offer something similar? Well, they, they might, but like I said, I still got you know, maybe one under contract here and I still got about an acre right here. Right. So, so yeah, it, it can. I just, my contention is that really sooner is better than later, especially the two points I point out that you, when you're leaving the ballparks, that you can have another point to get over here to get to the Starbucks, Brahms, the Dairy Queen, and whatever else might go in over here. And helps you leave, and you know, now you have the arcade, I think that will help quite a bit there. But even this was the second design for that. They were a little bit concerned, if I remember from the meeting, they were concerned about the uh, Kellogg Drive, the cars flowing in and out on that arcade and stopping. So this would actually complete, give them another point to get out. it didn't help when you said yourself that you don't need it right now um, and as far as return on investment the taxpayers that are paying for it don't see much return on investment for there being a road there you know what I mean like it's it's their money that we're spending at that point so yeah, I mean maybe in the future I, I could see that but if there's not a need for it right now I don't see a reason for us to spend the money I'm if nobody else has any questions or comments, I think we can do one of the three actions and make a motion to either deny the request for cost share, approve the request for cost share and direct staff to formalize the necessary documents, or table the request for the cost share, unless somebody has a different so motion they want to make. So we can table it table for the next meeting, or the table we can table as long as we want. The need arises again, is it just... If we deny it now, they can bring it back. If we don't make a motion, then it dies and can be put back on the agenda. If we table it, it gets put back on the agenda. If we approve it, then it's over. If you table it, 
consider when you want to reconsider it. You know, it's really not a definitive date. No, right. no typically yeah. I, I usually try to bring them back around. A year from now. <laughs> well, I mean, that's what I suppose. Yeah. In my yeah. mind's eye, as the development grows, no. I mean, if it's not done at that point, if there's not been a deal made with, I just think there's other venues <coughs> that has there for that to get done. Sure. Um, I mean, I don't know. Would you agree with you? It potentially is a business deal to be made with new occupants <coughs> to cover that, right? Well, yeah, it's just that where you are with the Starbond development right now, yes, it's ready to open, right, or it is open. And really, I think the more access you can get to this development with the retail sales in there and the resale sales potential, I think you just the sooner the better. That's, that's my opinion. For yes, you, for the city. Yes, sir. And for us, like I said, yeah, we can do it, but it might be 10 years before we go. Right. So if you have lots of congestion at Kellogg Drive and Crown Drive, and you don't like that, then I guess you can go in and and then build it. Yes, now, I might not be willing to do 50% cost share at that time. I said, well, I've got to live without this long. Right, right. <laughs> I say, well, you guys are on your own now. Yeah. It's a it's a public road. You can pave it any time you want. Right. But you're saying your fifty percent is that blue dark blue line, and our fifty percent is the green. It's half the green. No. And the other fifty uh, percent is going to be passed on to yeah. the. Yeah. Counts about. We're only talking about the green. You want to say half the price of the green? Yeah, we pay half the. Oh, I thought that's what he was going to finish with the dark blue. We are. That is that's it. We are. Right. Yeah. The blue is going to happen regardless. But the green, we would still be able to pay half. Well, we'd put it on the special assessments. So, I like to make a motion. So, first of all, I want to say you're a huge contributor to the, the, the growth of our city. Much respect to you. Thank you so much. I'd like to make a motion to deny the request at this time. A motion by Aubrey. Second. Second by Keaton. All in favor of the denial of the request say aye. 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 Thank motion you. Motion Thank you very much. This is, oh, we're just going to go ahead and wait for that. Yeah, there. Wait for the mayor to come back. H.1, the special use application for the seasonal bar or outdoor venue, case number SUP 23-1. So a quick background, I'm Ben Healy of Healy Investments and submitted an application for special use firm, the SUP. The use will be for a seasonal temporary bar and outdoor venue located around 183rd Street and US 54 across from Walmart. The developer introduced the possibility that on April 10th before the planning commission determined that the idea would be possible. The developer later presented an idea on April 17th to the city council during the rezoning of the land and the city council indicated that it had no immediate objections. The applicant is now going through the formal process of applying for a special use application to forego certain subdivision regulations that would pertain to permanent structures and is seeking approval for a seasonal bar and outdoor venue. Planning Commission indicated it did not see foresee any potential problems with the proposed idea and on May 8th voted to approve the special use application SUP 23-1. It was approved for a three-year time frame and allowed the applicant to petition the Planning Commission and the City Council for a fourth year. The final decision for the SUP would be before the City Council, which is being considered today. So this analysis kind of reviews um, portions of the Article 13 of Amendment Section 101, and I will read verbatim. Because of the particular factors associated with activities, certain uses which might have an adverse effect upon nearby properties or upon the character of future development of a district are not permitted outright in the districts, but are allowed as special uses which, when they propose location, is supplemented by additional conditions such as to make the use considered compatible to surrounding property, neighborhood, and the zoning district. So, Temporary uses are outlined in Article 6.101. A bar is not outlined in Article 6, so the developer is asking if they can be considered for a temporary use with a special use permit. 
Uh, the developer is asking for a temporary use delineation such that the general provisions under Article 3, 100 point B for new uses of old structures would not apply. New uses of old structures would require all the zoning and regulations to come into play. An SUP needs to be reviewed by the Planning Commission and approved by the City Council. Publication is also required, allowing 20 days elapsed prior to consideration of the Planning Commission. City Council, uh, excuse me, City Attorney confirmed that special use can be approved with time limits such that if there are any concerns or comments or thoughts by the Planning Commission City Council, if they wanted a limited time of special use, it could be considered. So this is the bar location as being proposed. Uh, since this uh, aerial image is taken, this has all actually gone away, and the developer has actually removed a lot of the trees around here and cleaned up this area very, very well, and also this area has also been removed by Kansas Department of Transportation. Uh, this is a concept rendering that's designed by Law Kingdom, uh, reflecting some of the ideas and concepts in the, of the developer for that area. These are the times of use. The planning commission asked the developer to delineate exactly when it would be open, how long it would be open, and the duration of the seasonal use, and uh, the special use permit. And so the summer schedule would be Tuesday through Sunday. The fall schedule, I believe, would be Thursday through Sunday. Times would be open would be Tuesday through Thursday, 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. Friday, Saturday, would be noon to midnight, and Sunday would be noon to 8 p.m. Uh, months to be active would be May through October. They would like to be open around Thanksgiving and Christmas, but obviously that would be depending on the weather. Years of operation for duration of the special use will be 23, 2024, and after the most number 30 option will be available. Planning Commission approved 2023, 2024, and 2025 with, it, with an option, the third option, to be reviewed by Planning Commission City Council for 2026. Financial and ordinance will have to be published and current at small cost. Legally, it is approved as a form. It is recommended to the governing body either waive the reading of the ordinance number one and also approve the ordinance, ordinance for the special use application case number SCP 23 1 for voice plus a roll call. But the developer is here. Uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask me or uh, Mr. Ben Healy, who's also in attendance. Well, I, it's in my opinion, I think we should approve. I think we're wanting things in Goddard. We want to grow Goddard. We want to bring people in. And I think uh, we have an ambitious entrepreneur that wants to help us accomplish that goal. So. I agree. The community Facebook page is constantly asking for a bar, grill, restaurant, something, and I think it'd be a good venue to have. Okay. And do I have a motion to waive the reading? I make a motion that we waive the reading of the audience. Motion by Brent, second by Sarah. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Do I have a motion to approve the word? Make a motion to approve the ordinance for the special use application case SUP 23-1. Motion by Keaton. Second. Second by Aubrey. Roll call. House Member Fish? Yes. House Member Lena? Yes. Mayor Larkin? Yes. House Member Trailer? Yes. House Member Collins? Yes. Will be ordinance number 922. Thank you very much. What, if you want, you can save the rest of the night. Uh, okay, I just want to say thank you all for, you know, that, I mean, you made it easy on me tonight. Uh, <laughs> so I'm glad you're all in support, and I was hoping we weren't on a trend from the last one. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Um, we hope, that there, I, I can update you on all sorts of stuff. We talked to NABCD. Everybody seems to be moving right along. Liquor license is coming along. So we really hope, we were hoping with an approval, possibly June 2nd for an opening. Um, we'll, I've got some things to work on with Micah on the approach and different things, but um, I think we'll be quick, so thank you very much. Share this vision in your head. Uh, the vision of the, uh, of the whole the yeah. bar? Okay. okay. Um, thank you. So again, Ben Healy, nice to see you all again. Um, the, yeah. So uh, we've, we've actually give you, give you a little bit of an update with MABCD. They said, yeah, the bar area is fine. Uh, we've got to do a couple of things with exit signs and lights and wiring and covered outlets and things like that. But they, some very basic stuff, but they did say uh, no customers inside. If we did, they'd put us under some occupancy rules and some different code. So we said, no problem, we'll, we'll end up having walk-up bars on the edges of the building and you know, food, uh, different things to sell for, for that. We do plan on here. These are these are probably drawn a little bit forward, but these will probably start about here. These are food trucks and probably just create a little horseshoe there. So as you drive in, find a parking spot. Uh, this we're going to widen and gravel all of this uh, here probably pretty quick, and uh, come in. Uh, there's an activity area. 
Over here would be the food trucks, um, bar, walk up around here. We'll probably also, somewhere out here, maybe in one or two spots, have a little mobile selling station where we, you know, save the walk type thing. Uh, put some horse troughs in a covered area with people go up and buy drinks, what have you. Uh, this is drawn in as an activity area, which would be like bags, you know, a cornhole, um, kind of like a trash pong game where you throw a volleyball into the barrels and, you know, just stuff like that for all ages to enjoy. Uh, we have drawn in some like sands for spike ball. I do hope to do it because I really like spike ball. Um, so we'll, we'll see, but that's, that's all uh, activity. These are drawn in for covered areas, so we'll have some covered shaded areas. This will all be outside but covered shaded areas in different spots. We have containers drawn in. I'm working with the uh, owners at Simple Containers now about uh, bringing some out here. So we'll make a kind of a final decision on how that, uh, and, and really it'll just, those will just serve as a backdrop and as a wind block and a noise block, that kind of thing. We'll have some containers out there. We're not gonna use them, we'll lock them up. Um, but we're working on getting those. This is a drawn in for a, a stage area for a band. So we do hope to bring some bands in and you know, hopefully they're not terrible. And this is where they'd be. So sun setting here. <coughs> the sun will be in their eyes, but kind of at your back as you're uh, as you're watching the show. So that's cool. Um, these there's actually some trees that we're going to leave along here to provide some shade, kind of cast a shadow. It's here the other day, kind of down in this area. So at least some will be shaded. These here are fire pits, but this is one of the things that uh, the fire department, as we met, they actually came out and took a couple of them. Brad Chris was one of them, and. Uh, they said anything over three feet in diameter, you know, we're gonna fall under a lot of their regulations. Probably gonna call in a burn permit because I had a massive one, you know, with big rocks and everything around. It was really cool, but they were like, nope, that you, you know, that's gonna put you under a lot of uh, supervision. So they said three feet in diameter, and so we're we'll figure out the fire pit thing. But uh, I do think it's we might throw a rager like once a year, maybe on Fourth of July, and you know, get a permit and. And make sure that's okay, but I think normally we'll probably just have some small ones. So your food vendors and all that, you can draw a variety of like local vendors. There's a lot of lot of people in this country. For food truck type things, that should be, yeah. or just vendors in general. Oh, just food vendors. Uh, yeah, yeah. So we're trying to find at least at, you know west side as close as we can for. Um, uh, food trucks okay. and then vendors we're uh, I don't know if my office has worked with uh, the liquor store uh, but we were planning on talking to so you know we were gonna have to go buy actual liquor from a liquor store and get that so we hope we can do that with someone here in town um, we'll probably work with LDF and, and coke bottling um, ice we're gonna have to do ice so we're kind of figuring that out right now a lot of things are just like we're, we're, we're talking through it and figuring it out now. So, but yeah, uh, local vendors, whatever, whatever we can find locally, um, obviously what we want to support. So um, anyway, that's uh, music. There'll be music all the time. So we'll have, whether there's a band or not, you know, we'll have some music, covered areas, places to sit, places to get some food and drink. And just really, a, I'm, I'm just kind of tired of losing to Wichita. I mean, we just get all Wichita secondhand stuff, and we just lose to them constantly. So we'll win here. And we'll <laughs> yeah, good, good. Well, come, come by and see us. Any, anything else? I know you got something to say. <laughs> Listen, uh, Paul Fest, they have this potato food truck. Mm -hmm. They get like tater tots and stuff. So yeah. if you can get that out there, that'd be safe. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, you know, if so you if you I'm find that like, name, I'll call on. Hey, I know a guy who has a he lot of vendor connections now. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Maybe, maybe we'll do a, uh, a Main Street Market after party on it. <laughs> there, there, hey, yeah. there we go. There we go. No, I'm I'm really excited. I think this is going to be awesome for uh, not only for for the community, but you know something that's. It's driven me nuts for years to watch thousands of people come to play baseball and then all of them pop on Kellogg and disappear. Yeah. And, uh, and so I, I love the location. It's almost like you're putting a little wall because you know you can't drive right past an outdoor bar right after a baseball game. It's just not possible. It'll just pull you in. It's, yeah, yeah, so yeah. you're going to yeah. suck yeah. people in. Yeah, yeah. I'm so excited. They will be able to. So, yeah, thank you for, uh, for your willingness to choose Goddard over Wichita. We appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, you bet. You bet. Anything else? All right, well, thank you all. I do appreciate it. All right. <clears throat> Honorable Mayor and City Council, this is item H.2. This is an administrative fee for temporary no petitions. 
Um, so, quick background, developers submit petitions to the City Council for con consideration of finance and improvements. Uh, these petitions ask the City if they would be willing to incur debt to finance the improvements and have the debt be assessed against the properties over time. Uh, those petitions come with cost estimates, contingency fees, and administrative fees for that phase of development. Uh, when the temporary notes get converted to permanent financing in the form of bonds, there is a submittal to the bond attorneys which outlines this cost, such as construction, engineering, administration, etc. The city would like to add a 5% cost for administration based on the true and actual construction cost to the total overall cost for the phase of development. It would then be sent off to the county for special assessment. Uh, this fee would help recover costs incurred by the city for work done on new developments, and this would help prevent the city at large covering those costs through the general fund, which is cash flow by tax collection. So the black over here, this is, comes from Article 12, Section 133.B. The black stain is as is. The green, which really got washed out with this projector, apologize for that. It'll probably look better on your agenda item. The green is what we're proposing to be added. Um, I'll go ahead and skip the black part and go straight to the green. Uh, cost for improvements, design, constructed, managed, engineered, and financed through the petition and temporary note and bond process shall include administrative fee paid to the city in an amount equal to 5%. The 5% shall be determined based on the true and actual design and construction costs of that phase of the development and collected at the completion of the assessment proceedings for that phase of the development. Financially, there are, uh, an ordinance will have to be published in current small publication costs. Legally, it's approved as the form. It is recommended that the governing body waive the reading of the ordinance, and then two, approve the ordinance for the proposed changes to Article 12, Section 133.B of the Subdivision Regulations. Uh, since this is an amendment to the Subdivision Regulations, this was first presented to the Planning Commission, which approved it. Um, there was a 20 days elapsed that had to elapse prior to being presented and uh, publication in the city newspaper, and after which, if you feel that this is acceptable, we would publish it in, with an ordinance in the city newspaper and become official 30 days after that. But we do have uh, Brett Sjogren, uh, Steve Wold, who's a financial advisor, and Kevin Cowan, uh, Gilmore Bell, who's representing us for bond, if you do have any questions about that. Any questions? None? Do I have a motion to waive the reading? Maybe, yeah. I'll make a motion to waive the reading. Motion by Brett. Second. Second by Keaton. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Motion to approve the ordinance. Make a motion to approve the ordinance for the proposed changes to Article 12, Section 133B of the Subdivision Regulations. Motion by Sarah. Second. Second by Keaton. All in favor say aye. aye. Or uh, roll. roll call, sorry. Roll. Council Member Fish? Yes. Council Member Leland? Yes. Mayor Larkin? Yes. Council Member Trailer? Yes. Councilmember Collins? Yes. The ordinance 923. Thank you very much. This is item H.3. This is resolutions authorizing improvements for Bridger at Maple Phase 1. Uh, so quick background, this is the first of three actions to be taken by the City Council for the, authorization, for the authorization of improvements. The second step will be the consideration of a resolution authorizing the solicitation of bids for the issuance of general obligation temporary notes. The final step will be the resolution ratifying a temporary note of sale authorizing the second step. Uh, the background financial and legal consideration will be presented as a single item under H.3 through an analysis and recommendation action sections delineating each resolution for consideration. The acceptance and petition and consideration of an improvement authorizing resolution can be taken in a single motion with a voice vote occurring after a motion and a second. So you guys have seen this before. We did this for Arbor Creek uh, Phase 3. This is going to be Bridger at Maple Phase 1. Uh, the developer is petitioning city council to ask for them to aim for the city to incur debt through temporary notes and permanent financing for the improvements of streets, um, storm sewer, sanitary sewer, and water grading, etc. For this development, Bridger at Maple is between 183rd and 167, just to the west of Maple Village and uh, to the east of Elk Ridge, north of Spring Hill. Uh, so, as mentioned, the resolution accepts the petitions, authorizes the project, and issuance of temporary notes to construct improvements for future bond issuance under the special assessment statutes. The petitioner is a sole property owner within the proposed development improvement district under KSA 126A04. The property owner is requesting no public hearing or notice be given. The apportionment of the cost of the improvements between the improvement district and the city is to be assessed 100% against the improvement district and zero to be paid by the city at large. In the event all or part of lots or parcels of the improvement district are replatted or the ownership of a single lot is or may be divided into two or more parcels, the assessment shall be calculated or recalculated on the basis of the method of assessment set forth herein. We typically call that just a respread. So let's say they chop them into smaller and smaller lots, we would do what's called a respread agreement so that if you have four lots and it turns into eight lots, people are all paying an equal amount for each of them for these for these improvements. All improvements are for the Bridger at Maple development, and the following slides outline the lots and blocks that will be assessed. And so 
H.3a is a resolution authorizing the sanitary sewer improvements for a total petition cost of one million fifty thousand. H.3b is a resolution authorizing the stormwater improvements for a petition cost of nine hundred fifty-four thousand. H.3c is a resolution authorizing street improvements for one million nine thousand. H.3d is a resolution authorizing water line improvements for a total of six hundred twenty-three thousand. So this is on its side. North is this way. This is Maple. Purple is phase one, which the improvements will be along inside of this purple area. Financially, there is a lot of text right here, so you can just read it. Legally, the proposed documents have been reviewed by bond counsel Kevin Cowan and Gilmore and Bell, and financial advisor by Sherwin Steve Nicholas of the company. It is in effect upon publication time sent on newspaper and record. H point A resolution authorizes sanitary sewer improvements for Bridger Maple Phase One. Motion to accept the petition for the improvements and approve the resolution authorizes sanitary sewer improvements for Bridger Maple Phase One. So this is one of four, if you want to consider it. If you do have any questions, like I as mentioned, we do have Brett Showrin and Kevin Cowan available. We also have uh, Harlan Four Acre City Engineer, Brooke Brandberg, Public Works Director, Ryan Peck, myself. If you guys do have any more technical questions about it or thoughts, concerns, or comments. Pretty straightforward. You got any concerns from staff? Anything? All okay? Motion back to the map. This is on its side, so north is over here. <laughs> So this is Maple right over here. This is the first phase of development. Is that okay? Yeah, north is this way. Out here, you're in county land over here. This area over here is land that's in the city. It's undeveloped currently. Elk Ridge would be further to the west. Where's the two single family lots? Single family is going to be right over here. That's it? Mm-hmm. That'll back up to that neighborhood. This is backs up to X7 edition over here. These are the county lots. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Do I have a motion? I make a motion that we uh, phase one sanitary sewer motion by Brent second by Sarah all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. okay very good this is h.3b the stormwater improvements same and be accept the petition for improvements and approve the resolution authorizing the stormwater improvements for bridge area maple phase one right, motion. So motion motion by Sarah second second by Aubrey all in favor say aye aye aye, aye. Very good. This is H.3C, street improvements. So this would be the same. Accept the petition for improvements and approve the resolution authorizing street improvements for Bridger at Maple Phase 1. So motion. Motion by Sarah. Second. Second by Aubrey. All in favor say aye. 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 Very good. This is H.3D, water line improvements. So once again, accept the petition for improvements and approve the resolution authorizing water line improvements for Bridger at Maple Phase 1. Right, motion. So motion. Motion by Sarah. Second. Second by Aubrey. All in favor say aye. 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 Very good. Thank you very much. This is item H.4. This is an IRB request for Camp Bow Wow. So, quick background uh, Michael Schroeder of Camp Bow Wow has asked that the City Council would consider a partnership for the request of industrial revenue bonds, IRB, for the financing and construction of Camp Bow Wow. The City currently does not have an IRB policy, so, City staff is using the same policy as Bell Air to outline the agenda item and give parameters to the request. If the City Council wants to formally consider the request for an IRB, City staff will publish all necessary documents and have the developer file an application for the City paying a non-refundable fee of $2,800 to cover the cost for the City slash professional staff, the cost benefit analysis, and the publication cost and the time set. So the governing body is determining if they want to consider an IRB, which stands for an industrial revenue bond, either in part or in full, to Camp Bow Wow. If the City Council wants to have a formal consideration of Camp Bow Wow IRB request, the following would have to happen. Number one. An application submitted by the applicant and a fee paid for costs incurred for preparation of the documents as well as an understanding that the application does not guarantee an incentive. So this is a non-refundable cost of $2,800 that does not guarantee an incentive. That's why we're having a discussion today. A, there would have to be a publication cost and time set of around $300. There would have to be an application fee of $1,500 for professional services and staff time. 
There has to be a cost benefit analysis, a CBA of $1,000 roughly. We usually partner with Wichita State University for a cost benefit analysis. Total cost up front would be around $2,800. If a property tax abatement is to be considered, a public notice published by a city newspaper allowing seven days to lapse prior to council considering the application and letters of intent sent out to taxing jurisdictions. If a property tax abatement is to be considered a cost benefit analysis by the city, typically the city recruits the Wichita State University Center for Economic Development and Business Research, the CEDBR, to generate a CBA, which is a cost benefit analysis of around 800 to 1,000. A CBA could take about two weeks for a turnaround time, so I've already spoken with WSU about that. Once the public hearing date has been established, City Council will deliberate during the public hearing on what type of incentive to grant or if they do not want to grant any incentive. The options would be as follows, sales tax exemption incentive only, property tax exemption in whole or in part incentive only, both sales tax and property tax exemption in whole or in part. And since the city, does, as mentioned, does not have a formal policy that is emulating the policy of LA, there are certain questions for councils to consider. Since we don't have any parameters here, we're not going off of any formal policy, we're just kind of copying and pasting right now from Bel Air until we actually draft it. It's in the works. We're, we're writing it right now, but right now we're just borrowing from Bel Air. So questions considered, is this business unique or is there another business that provides a similar service? You want to try to typically avoid unfair advantages. What kind of jobs are being created? Are these high-end jobs, medium or low-end jobs? Uh, but for understanding, basically, if not but for the incentive, would this project be able to cash flow and stand on its own? Um, and this is basically something that we typically want to consider. Does state law prohibit the business form from um, receiving tax abatement incentives based on its North American industry classification, which is called the NAIC? Um, Camp Bowers NAIC is listed as 81812, which is not listed at permitted use. And then any questions for bond cancel or the financial advisor? So these are some numbers that outline that development. But before I go into those numbers, I, in case I misspoke, it's always good to turn around and look back at the old dress gentleman and see if they have any comments you guys want to address any of that? Did I misspeak? Or do you have anything that you want to add? Comments, turnaround time? The only, the only thing I noticed uh, on your previous slide, you can just click back just real quick. Um, number one references a sales tax exemption incentive only. And I just noticed, you know, that, that language kind of has a broad connotation where they can exempt sales tax for operations, things like that. And that exemption only applies to uh, sales tax on construction related activities, labor, materials, things like that. So, yeah, that's all that's all. That's a good thing. Yeah, so that's only for construction, uh, not for just anything in particular. Um, one question I think is, is how long does these typically turn around to prepare those documents? Well, that was a question that came up before, before we hired me. If you want to address that in terms of bond documents? Yeah. Just the entire process. The whole entire process. They probably bond on this if you want to talk about that. Yeah. That way it gives them a time frame. Yeah. yeah, so from from start to finish, particularly at the, the outset and the cost benefit analysis was referenced, which is only necessary if you're going to consider a property tax abatement, that's going to be uh, at least two weeks sort of in advance of the hearing. If this is something you want to consider, you would call for the hearing two weeks out. We would work with Wichita State on the cost benefit analysis. That has to be present uh, at the hearing if you're going to consider granting a property tax abatement. So kind of. But that would be an, a new agenda item. That yes. Would, that would, yeah. Yeah, so sort of two weeks in advance of your for first formal action you would call for a hearing and know, you know, the next agenda we're going to have a hearing. There's going to be some work done in the meantime with a cost benefit analysis. Bond Council would prepare an intent resolution uh, that you could adopt after the hearing that says we intend to issue these bonds, grant a property tax abatement, whatever those incentives are. So that's two weeks. Uh, after that, the process is really dependent upon the developer or the business owner, just how quickly are they moving. The financing is 100% their responsibility. So if they have financing uh, with their bank, a bank, uh, their normal bank, we would take as bond counsel a term sheet and dr draft bond documents that would include all those terms. And that's, I mean, if you really kind of push through it from start to finish, it's probably going to be a 60-day process. Sometimes what you'll see is the business owner will get the resolution of intent, rely on that, go put together construction financing, 
either finish the project or nearly finish the project and then the bonds would be issued at the end so it could be that you do some work up front with the intent resolution and hearing and then maybe it's six months uh, or more and this has happened on a couple of the cities IRBs where you don't <coughs> issue them until the project is complete so then there'd be some period of time there this has not been the first IRB that the city uh, no I guess for a question that I've seen and I've had from the community is what does this cost the city of Goddard? Does this cost anything for us up front? Yeah. So, so a sales tax exemption, let's start with there. If, with that. if you're going to grant that, then it would be the city's portion of uh, sales tax on their overall tax burden. That's primarily, I mean, you, it's not difficult math. It's primarily a benefit funded by the state because that's the bulk of the sales tax. So if you give a project a sales tax exemption, it's mostly an exemption from state sales tax. Uh, ad valorem tax abatement, I mean, gonna depend on the value of the property and, and whether you grant a full abatement 100% over 10 years, which is the maximum, or, you know, something in between. I think we've talked about that a little bit. Some of the city's IRBs have, you know, 100% the first year in terms of an abatement, then 80, 20, or 80, 60, 40, 20, reducing. So, yeah, so there are a lot of different things uh, you could do. The cost-benefit analysis will, will outline sort of what the cost is to the city. Micah referenced the but four test. I think that's part of it. It's, you, initially it doesn't cost you anything. It's more of a forbearance kind of we're not sure this is going to happen unless we grant this incentive. Um, and so it will cost us something in the meantime, but it may not be anything we would have gotten if we don't offer the incentive or we may get it you know, sometime later down the road. So it's, there's the ad valorem taxes that you forego. And again, that's gonna depend on the value of the project, but if it's a couple of million dollar building and your ta mill levy is X, I mean, you can sort of do the math that it's gonna be uh, in the tens of so, thousands of so dollars. So just get it clear, if the council were to approve this or a 10 year stair step, to maybe it doesn't cost the tax. Nothing out of up, pocket. Out of pocket, it costs them deferred, right? They're, right. they're saying instead, of us getting these taxes, we'll take a small percentage, you know, and then we'll stair step it. We'll the IRB. Right? Exactly. So, okay. So, we got that right. So, in business, we're, we're done. Okay, so, first of all, does the, uh, does, do they own land already? Yeah, yeah. so, th they Is will. Is a lot of this stuff already done way before somebody buys a lot? Well, I'm not sure what their location is, but you know I'll. I'm saying is this is right next to before they ever come to town. Okay, it's right next to Sonic. Because now they're asking for stuff when they already own the lot. They're gonna build yeah. no matter what. That that's correct. Um, no, that that's part of the but for consideration. Right. It's. I mean, I don't know the answer to that question. They may own the property already, and yeah. and this may be their intention. Um, in. I mean, Again, that's for them to speak to, but if they don't get these incentives, they maybe they decide. They well, are here. No, we're just kidding. I'm, I guess, Brent, that was a, uh, another point I was going to bring up. And we, it's fine, you know, we might disagree on that, and that's fine. But the city of Goddard has an opportunity to set a good precedence. We're always talking about setting precedence, setting precedence, setting precedence. Well, we have an opportunity to set a precedence that we're for growth. We're for growing line, okay? And we have an opportunity to say, okay, maybe we don't want to do 100% 10-year abatement. Okay, but we can do a stair step. The, the taxpayer still gets, right, a business that comes in, and the new developer, the new entrepreneur, gets benefit for coming to Goddard. Because I don't care who you are, it's still a risk to come here and build a brick and mortar business in this town. Because there's not enough rooftops. So if we have the mentality where we say, oh, well, they're still going to come, so so be it. That's a 
bad mentality to have and that's a bad precedence to set. So you have to support them. That's my opinion. And I'm just giving my speech. Well, when I was looking to build and set up my business, you know, they're going to be a 10 year tax rate in Britain, you know, but I decided to do it in Wichita instead and I didn't take it. But um, the, uh, I don't think that it was that big a deal. You know what I'm saying? Might not be a big deal to you, but I think to a business that might have very slim margins, it might be a big deal. Every business is different. I help run a manufacturing company, and our margins are different than other in the whole other manufacturing business. It's different than aircraft, and so. I want to allow maybe those businesses that are a tough business to run to be the most successful they can be. Now I want to give them the opportunity with that. Yes, are they possibly going to come without this? Are they probably going to come without this? I would say so. But is that the precedence we want to set? Or do we want to set a precedence that we're pro-growth, we're pro-development, we're pro-entrepreneur? That is the precedence I want to set. So that's why I'm voting yes for that. And I'm excited that they want to come. And I and I hope that other businesses want to come and approach Goddard and move to Goddard and set up a, a brick and mortar business here and invest in the community. Because I, as long as I'm on here, I'm going to support things like this. Because that's what's going to grow Goddard. I want to be able to look back and go, man, look at all the things we did. Are there other businesses in this in Goddard? that provide the same services. I mean, what's their, who's your competitor? We have Doggy Boutique, don't we? Yeah, do, they, do they do the boarding team. stuff? Yeah. What else? Is that I think that's that's my only big concern, but I, I agree with Larkin that we want to show businesses it, that Goddard is going to grow, and that has to happen now. We can't, we can't wait any longer to start growing. And so getting businesses to come in and having an incentive like this, I think is, is great to bring business, especially when it's things like what Camp Bow Wow is. You know, it's it's a unique business, and, and I understand we have one in Goddard, but from what I've seen, they're doing pretty good. They, they draw a pretty good crowd, and, uh, and so, yeah. Since Kevin Cow is not the developer, I'll let him stay. I, I, well, I was gonna add one more thing, and this, this may provide some assurance. We've talked about the cost-benefit analysis. You'll have that before you have to approve a property tax abatement. And it will, it's measured over the 10 years of an abatement. Not, and I always caution, that's a very, very, very conservative way to look at things, that it's measuring the cost benefits just during the 10 years of your cost. And that's not why you're doing that. You, you're not going to offer an incentive for 10 years so that somebody could leave after 10 years. You want to get them established. And so the real benefit's gonna be after the 10 years. So just wanted to add that. It, through this process, you'll get a cost benefit analysis. It's not just gonna measure the cost of the ad valorem tax abatement. It will measure new employees, people traveling to them, maybe they're bringing their pets, dropping them off, maybe they're stopping at Starbucks. I mean, it takes into account all of those things, enhanced sales tax receipts because of those things. Uh, and probably, again, we'll give you an opportunity to look at it. If it's more than one, that means notwithstanding the cost of the <coughs> tax abatement, you're getting a net benefit during that 10-year period. So um, I'll stop there. So, so basically, this agenda item is us saying, we don't have a process currently really this is the process that do we want to establish this process and this cost this agenda yeah. item is to is basically to get a pulse check of the council so the developer doesn't have to spend the money right. up front because we don't want them spending it up front right. or an automatic nope if you guys automatically felt like no this is not going to happen then you don't want the developer to spend twenty eight hundred dollars to be told no in a month or so so it's just it helps them save that cost because the city does incur costs uh, as mentioned Kevin Cowell and Brett Shogun and everybody else <coughs> we incur those costs and so like I said we usually pay, they would be required to pay that twenty eight hundred dollars not just for the city staff's time but the thousand dollars for the cost benefit analysis the three hundred dollars for the publication etc so you know they spend twenty eight hundred dollars and then just be told no in two weeks which is typically try to avoid that and I know it's difficult because 
each project could stand on, you know, you want to look at it independently based on sort of a merit-based criteria, which is what the cost-benefit analysis is for. So it's almost like you want them to pay the 2800 just so you can review all the criteria and then maybe make a decision later at a later point. But if you felt like you already had a determination inside already, at least they could be aware of that. And so to try to help bring about some more clarity to that, I've already outlined the math on H.4 analysis just so you can kind of have an idea of what you are foregoing. Um, and you try to look at it that way. That way, you don't. You, we don't have a cost benefit analysis. We don't have the formal application because at this point, we're just determining if council is even in favor of it at all. So that's what we're looking at. So that's what this outlines is the proposed building valuation would be around 1.5. Total potential appraised value would be uh, 1.7. That's with the land. So 1.5 is for the building. With the land, it's 1.7. City tax would be around 13995 per year. Total taxes per year would be around 60362 which includes the state, 1.5, the county at 29.368, Goddard at 31.309, uh, school district at 54.949, and the county fire district bonds at 17.912 mills. A 10-year, 100% of city property taxes, of city property taxes would be around 139000 A 10-year, 100% abatement of all taxing jurisdictions would be approximately 603602 with one exception, the school district has a protected eight mil total potential abatement, which would be, which would then reduce the 603, 620 to 559, 620. Um, labor for um, original construction of a commercial facility exempt without IRB issuance, with the allocation of the cost of this project from labor materials is unknown. City sales tax um, for, let's say, 15, uh, excuse me, 1.5 million of construction expenditures would be around $15,000. Total sales tax exemption would be around 127,500, which includes the city, county, and the, and the state. So the state has a 6.5, the county has a 1%, and we have a 1%. So as, as Kevin Cowan mentioned, the, the biggest forbearance is really the state sales tax, because they have a 6.5%, and we, we have a 1%. So we're foregoing um, you know, about $15,000, but they're foregoing a lot more. I think it's staggered. <coughs> The staggered stair step, it's, it's better because we're still getting a giving an incentive, but yet we're not just foregoing a decade's worth of property taxes, right? So there's mutual benefit on both sides. I concur with your assessment. So it's, yeah, um, yeah I, I will argue believe that too. We have to grow. And, um, um, It's always easier, most of the time, to just say no, because you're afraid of the backlash, right? And you're afraid of, afraid of what you might read on Facebook and things. It's harder to say yes, because you'll get ridiculed because you say yes. But what's better for Goddard as a whole? And it's in my opinion that we think progressively. And yeah, well, if you're thinking of those terms of, backlash, you're not looking at the big picture. You're not looking at the 20-year uh, mindset of where we want the community to be, you know. Um, so yeah. that's exactly right. So uh, my, my only concern is is Doggy Boutique and, and not hurting them in any way. That's that's my only concern. You know, I think we have incredible businesses here that, that we want to continue to see them grow as Goddard grows. And so, you know, if I, I don't know. That's my only hesitation is I don't want to give, can't bow wow. This. Sorry, it's just funny to say can't bow wow and doggy boutique. So I'm sorry. Um, <coughs> it, it's, it, I, I just don't want to hurt a business we already have. But I, I also think, you know, I've, I think doggy boutique's been growing. And, and as far as I've heard, I think they're even looking to expand to a new building. And so obviously there's a market for this. I think that goes back. Um, Brent's comments is how does this you know does this really affect you? right mm -hmm. and I think to those comments that's capitalism we're not trying to help one business over another by doing this and that's what some businesses might perceive this as oh well, they got it and I didn't this is to simply grow the city of Goddard and to incentivize more people to come right and so I hope that you know, this money per year, uh, $13,000, $14,000, uh, 
doesn't give that much of a leg up, but that's not the goal here. The goal is to help grow, right? Well, and, and just for clarification, if Dougie Boutique were to come in a couple of weeks and say, we want an IRB to build here, are we then allowed to do that again? Okay. Yeah, I just yeah, want to make sure that it's yeah. not like, a, well, if you already have one for this business, you can't do it for another that's similar. <clears throat> I mean, I'm, I'm all for helping Goddard businesses in any way we can, so I think it'd be great. I'd like to make a motion to accept consideration of a formal application by Camp Bowen. Motion by Sarah. Second. Second by Keaton. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. Well, I'm going to stay for the rest of the night or not. Do you have anything you want to add before you go? No, I just want to appreciate you guys' opportunity to let us move here. And uh, yeah, um, I mean, I'm here to serve with Dog and Boutique. I mean, a lot of people think we're competition, but really we're kind of in our own league. And sure. they're going to be fine just with us. Good. I mean, Good. we cooperate with a lot of yeah, that's the other question now. What was the difference? I mean, yeah, you know, yeah. What does set you apart? Just yeah, what sets you apart? So, I mean, the, the biggest thing, uh, I, I heard this from a guy when he tells his marketing staff to go out and market. It's like driving a Ferrari versus driving a Ford. A lot of people like driving a Ford or the Ferrari. I mean, everything in our place is going to be top notch, top of the line. I mean, just the way we do things. So, yeah. And, and to your, you know, about the, the, the benefit and stuff. Um, I'm just looking for that up front, the first few years. Um, you know, 50% of businesses in the first year fail, 95% after five years. You know, the margins, the ramp up, that's what's going to be crucial for us. That first first year, first five years is going to be crucial. We're, you know, to be honest, we're dealing with this was blowing from the people. Right now, they don't have a lot of that. So it's going to, you know, getting this is going to help us through that ramp up period and, and save some money that I can now turn back and throw back to my employees, you know, get better employees and stuff to pay them more. So that's that's my goal with it. So. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for choosing yeah. Goddard. Thank you. How's the puppy I didn't win? What's that? How's the puppy I didn't win? Is it okay? Is it doing good? It, it found a new home. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I cried. <laughs> <laughs> and we are breaking ground next week if we are coming, so you guys will be invited to that. So right, well, appreciate it. Thank you, sir. There next Tuesday, so. Have a good one. Take care. Take care. Take care. <clears throat> Thank you very much. This is item H.5. So this is the Spring Hill HOA Block Party Road Closure and Sound Waiver. Uh, so quick background, uh, Spring Hill HOA would like to host a block party on May 21st on the North and the Spring Hill Drive between the hours of 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. They have submitted a road closure permit to host this event and proposed closure has been reviewed by the Police Department and the Public Works Department. The event will have amplified sound with music and announcements that will be audible 150 feet away and will require sound waiver approved by the City Council. Uh, so this is an analysis. This is what you would typically see for most road closure or major events that require a sound waiver. Um, this comes from Chapter 11, Article 13. So prohibited no person in open space or within a structure, whether uh, public or private, property shall operate or permit the operation of any sound application system so that the sound is plainly audible a distance of 150 feet or more from the sound application system. Exemptions, the system was in authorized public activities such as parades, fireworks, sports events, music productions, or other activities which have been approved by the governing body of the City of Goddard or the Department of the City of Goddard authorized to grant such approval. The event requires a road closure permit, which has been submitted and received. The event requires a sound waiver, which is being considered by the governing body today. Um, so this is a portion that will be closed. Um, this has been reviewed, as mentioned, by the Police Department and the Public Works Department. This portion, by closing this, it allows everything over here on East Spring Hill Court to be able to exit onto the north to Maple, and anyone over here on North McCray Drive and North McCray Court will be able to go on Spring Hill Drive and exit onto 183rd or on this way and connect to Spring Hill and exit onto 183rd. Is this the same? Road closure we did last year. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, small publication cost because it is a sound waiver, so you need an ordinance. Legal, it's approved as a form. It is recommended to the council waive the reading of the ordinance and then to approve the waiver from the sound ordinance with the Spring Hill HOA block party and road closure request from the voice plus and roll call. Um, if there are any questions or comments about this, I guess they don't have a rep here. Say that again. Did, 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 yeah, did anybody no, I'm just trying to get an invite. Actually, it just sounds like a good time. It's actually just for me to go fishing. So there you go. No, it's, uh, no. I mean, I think. Yeah. No, I'm trying. Ooh, 
sorry. I'll just uh, I have one last year. I appreciate that. Oh, yeah. No, I think I, I love I love the idea of this kind of stuff, and, and it's what makes communities uh, so so like Goddard to be uh, so fun to be a part of. So yeah, I think it's great. Um, I'll make a motion to waive the reading of the ordinance. Second. Motion and a second. Do I have all in favor say aye? Aye. Aye. Okay. Do I have a motion to approve the waiver? Make okay. a motion to approve the waiver of the sound ordinance for the Spring Hill HOA block party and approve the road closure act. Motion by Sarah. Second. Second by Keaton. Roll call. Councilmember Fish? Yes. Councilmember Leland? Yes. Mayor Larkin? Yes. Councilmember Trailer? Yes. That's remember calling. We still more than invite, right? Yeah, <laughs> right? Yeah. If we get to yes. Yes. Be ordinance 924. Thank you very much. This is item H.6. I believe this is the treasurer's going to take it on this agenda item.
So again, uh, we rec uh, recommendation is recommend the city council approve the resolution authorizing the improvements and financing the improvements to GO bonds. And again, we'll have other actions coming to you, assuming you want to do the project to uh, secure the actual financing. Matt, can you go back to the projects on the left? There. I guess is there any questions on any of those potential projects concerns? I mean, it's really three projects. Where will we on Hopkins Lane? I well, we yeah. Where do we learn? Well, so I reached out to the neighbors because we came and spoke, and I've been reaching out multiple times, and I can't keep. I mean, I'm talking to them, but they don't ever give me an answer. So, um, I doesn't seem like they're that interested. Because if they were interested, then they would have told me yes by now. And we have to have a 100% approval from all three neighbors to do that. Um, I guess when it comes to Hawkins Lane in particular, I would say that if we don't get all three yeses by next meeting, we move on. Okay, well, the reason that we're presenting that total tonight, not and the way that the, uh, what, what you'll be proving is, what you'll be considering is written, is it is not, we're, we do not have to do Hawkins Lane. We can use that for other road projects. Perfect. But, but the reason we're doing it tonight this way is because the timeline is frustrating because of uh, the uh, holidays coming up over over the next couple months. So if we want to get this done, you know, this summer, uh, early this fall, we need to get this process started now. So that's why we're including that tonight, even though we may not do that specific project. And, and I agree with Hunter. I think because of our timelines and because this is a big project that needs to be done, we need to keep our infrastructure, get it up to where it needs to be. It's, we've neglected it for far too long. Um, I agree with Hunter. We have a meeting in three weeks. Um, if we can direct staff to send a letter to those three homeowners stating we need your response within three weeks for this council meeting. If you don't respond, we will consider that a no and we will be moving forward and then we can put it towards something else because there's plenty of roads that we can fix. Right. Um, and I agree, I, the numbers, you know, it was, Matt, what number can we do? And afford and I know the list is long of things we can fix but I don't want to spend any more time if Hawkins isn't going to get done if they don't want it to get done we have other things we can fix and, yeah. and we'll need to be careful be sure to identify projects that would be worthy of a 20-year investment because that's what we're doing right so. okay so now let's say hypothetically Neighbors don't agree. We don't get a response back, so we don't know what we're doing. So we're moving forward. Well, that that would that would only really matter at the at the you know specific phase where we have identified we identify what project we're going to do. So for the purposes of tonight, our our the resolution you consider is worded as such that you, we don't have to have that decided tonight. Okay. So what we're what we're ultimately tonight talking about is. Do we want to do 1.72? Correct. And that that still keeps us under that that 10 million cap we talked about at the last meeting. Uh, it's it, you know it, it's you know going to be the cost of what it would be with all the issuance fees, all the interest that would be represented, and we will still be under that with this amount. But also, it's it for my sake and the sake of all of us, but my sake in particular for you know heart attack reasons. It keeps it, it puts us at a uh, doable annual <coughs> debt service amount. But let's be clear, clarify for everybody that even if we go over that ten million dollars, it's not like growth stops. It's not. No, like, no, no. It, it's again, not like residential yeah. development is stopping. Again, this because we're because we're being going to be repaying this at large. Yeah. You know, for the whole city, we want to get that absolute best rate possible. So that's why we want to use it for that. Whereas yeah. these other things, the other types of debt we'll be considering, we'll consider in the future that may, you know, put, take us outside of that uh, bad qualified, uh, non-taxable area. Those, a lot of those projects we're going to be considering are going to be, you know, those are private developers. So we don't need to put our, we don't need to get the absolute best rate because we're still going to get a great rate regardless yeah. of those projects. Okay. 
It's almost not worth talking about. Right. 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 Right we can repair some of these roads that we have presented. I think it's very important that we, especially, I think we need to, we, we need to redo the North Front Road. I think it's, it's terrible. terrible. Yeah, I it's horrible. Russ is going to be affected. I mean, but I hope it doesn't, you know. And the benefit of He'll doing be that. happy when it's done. The benefit of doing that project now is we should be able to time it to coincide with the uh, okay. R-cut construction. So it's not necessarily happening at the same time. But resources will be mobilized at the same, at, around the same time, so we can get them knocked out together, or Good. one right after the other. But this, this type of project, this type of bond, has been talked about and talked about and talked about since I've been on this council. I never got done. The minds never got together. Everybody talked and dreamt, but nothing ever happened. And so this council finally came together and says, "We're going to do something, and we're going to get something done." And we got with the staff. And we actually worked. Unlike other councils in the past who just sat on their hands and didn't do nothing. So, are we going to choose to do something? I make a motion to approve the resolution authorizing the improvements and the financing of the improvements through GOS. Motion by Sarah. Second. Second by everybody. Second, Second by Brent. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Honorable Mayor and City Council, uh, this is item H.7, which is to consider the continued support of a jurisdictional sidewalk. <clears throat> so, quick background. In 2019, the city, in partnership with Cedric County and Wichita, submitted a partnership letter to support an interjurisdictional sidewalk. Sidewalk would run from 183rd Street East along the south side of Maple to 167. Once it crossed over to the east side of 167, which is the Wichita side, it would drop south about 300 feet to the schools. It would also, at the same time, head north and continue east along the north side of Maple until it terminates at around 135th Street. Originally, the project would include a cost share from the city for a portion of that apartment cost that WAMPA would not fund. Cedric County was recently approved to move forward um, along with this project application process for funding portion and Cedric County has determined to allow all of the out of pocket costs not paid for through the WAMPO funding to be paid for by Cedric County's capital improvement project, which is the CIP budget. Um, this means Goddard no longer has any out of pocket cost. However, a portion of the project is still in Goddard and as such, Cedric County wants to make sure the city is still wanting, willing to move forward with the partnership and Cedric County would like Goddard to write a letter of support for funding request by Cedric County for additional funding to cover the 20% not paid for by the WAMPO project funding. The Planning Development Director has already written a letter of support to Chad Barraza of WAMPO, the, the Director of WAMPO, to express support. If this is no longer viewed, the city, city staff will contact WAMPO and let them know that they no longer support the project. Uh, the governing bodies determine if they want to continue to support the building of an interjurisdictional sidewalk. It starts on the southeast corner of Maple 183rd, once the south side of Maple Blue Water until 167th. Runs on the east side of 167th, south of the school area, runs east of 167th to the north side of Maple, which is about 10 feet. Uh, this is the multi use path exhibit. This is presented by Boffman. This was submitted back in 2019. Uh, general parameters have stayed pretty much the same. And you'll notice some of the districts have changed since then. Financially and legally approved as a form. It is recommended, oops, it went too fast. It is recommended that City Council approve the continued support of the interjurisdictional sidewalk in Long Maple. We do have Central County here to represent the project. So, <coughs> do you have any questions for Central County? They are available? No? No questions? So, I, I like Teresa. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all want to talk there? Well, there's still other sides. Um, I think, <laughs> by the way, this, this is Mr. Packer, the county engineer, so if you want to uh, give him the opportunity, I'm sure he'd be happy to speak. But, you know. There we go. Uh, uh, or not, you don't have to give him well, well, this, this, this is the project <laughs> we're talking about right now, so well, we can talk about it. He can stay a while. No, yeah. 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 I think that, uh, I mean, there's been talks about some type of contribution from the city in the past now, and it's going to be all paid for. And so I think we're... <laughs> We would be foolish not to uh, move forward.
Good evening. Uh, yes. Uh, as of right now, um, we are. We, we, what this is all about basically is a <coughs> grant opportunity we have. In addition to WAPO funding, we have an opportunity to get a carbon reduction uh, program grant. So basically, it, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's federal. It's uh, funding from the U.S. DOT that would allow uh, funding for projects that reduce carbon emissions. Which obviously, in this particular case, uh, our our, our Big push is the idea that the sidewalk goes down to the Eisenhower comp school complex. And kids right now, they don't really have an option. They walk on the shoulders or the ditch. Um, some of them still do it, but this would give an opportunity for more kids to ride their bikes or walk to school. Um, and therefore, eliminating those, those parents needing to drive and, and, and come down there. So um, I will note that although we do believe if we, can, if we can get all this funding, everything will be in place. I'm not going to totally take away the option that we may come back to you oh, at some you other, know. at some oh, point in the know. future, uh, okay. just because of what's happening with construction costs and, um, and it, there is, the, you know, if things get crazy and it's just outside of our budget, we may come to you in the city of Wichita to potentially talk about that. But if we can get all this funding and, and move forward, uh, things are looking pretty well. Pretty is this good. on both sides of the street, one side of the street? In this particular case, it is one side of the street. So mm -hmm. as Mike had described, on Maple Street, it's on the south side through Goddard. Okay. It's on the north side through Wichita. And it's on the west, uh, excuse me, the east side of 167th. Well, I think there might be some. You probably don't have park benches in there, right? Uh, we do not have any park benches. So for the project. Park, park benches. <laughs> Offering things you have to offer. <laughs> 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 okay. You have to skew this gentleman. No, that's what we did on all the sidewalks, right? Well, that would be that would be up to us later. Um, uh, I guess my only advice is get moving on it fast, and you already know that. So, I, um, I mean, for us particular, we have the the two the 80 acre plots, right, Micah? 79, um, 77, yeah. Okay, so, I mean, those will be able to use it. We've got uh, all the all the homes to the south, um, uh, so we have a benefit. Um, so I would I would say uh, we should approve it. This project is currently under design uh, by Boffman. Uh, they are, they've already submitted clearing plans, uh, getting ready for uh, um, their uh, I don't think they're up to, I think they're up to office check, which is kind of like in the middle of the design, and everything's looking pretty good. In addition to what we described there, obviously there would be a crossing at 167th and Maple as well uh, that would be incorporated into the existing traffic signal. Okay. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Um, could we ask, will this tie into the, the existing sidewalk the city has at 183rd? A uh, very good point. Yes, it does. Oh, really? Oh. Yes, it does. It does connect all the way over 183rd to your existing sidewalk. Okay, awesome. Very good. While I have you here, mm -hmm. um, completely different subject, but the 183rd and Pawnee intersection? Yes. There was a wreck not there too was. long ago. What can we do about getting a four-way stop? I know I talked to Commissioner Dennis about that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, he mentioned doing a study, school getting ready to be out, so the traffic count's going to be lower. But one day, one of those kids are going to be leaving high school and they're going to get hit by one of the trucks. And we, then we're going to do something. Yes. And so the, um, we, we have been, um, since 2012, off and on, we have been looking at that intersection. Uh, ever since about, I believe, don't totally quote me, but I believe 2019, we have been in September running daily, or excuse me, uh, in September doing an analysis of that intersection, basically looking for traffic warrants. Uh, we look for traffic warrants, not only for four-way stop, two-way and four-way stop, but also for traffic signals. Uh, to, as of this past September of 2022, it did not meet any of those warrants. Um, the, uh, and I know that's, I, I've had to say that more times than not, but, and that's always very disappointing. Uh, however, we are also currently um, in a, a contract with KDOT. And they're having a third party, basically a consultant, do a local road safety plan. Um, it was supposed to have already been delivered to us uh, over a year and a half process, but during that process, the date. So right now, the latest date is they should be giving us our final report in June. 
uh, as uh, Trans Systems is the uh, consultant for District 5, K9. And uh, they have given us preliminary data, uh, nothing, no recommendations, nothing like that. But part of this plan is to look at every single intersection, every single unincorporated road in Cedric County. This paved. Um, so uh, what they've done is they've come up with a list of recommendations. Most of those recommendations aren't going to be do this at this intersection, do this at this intersection. It's going to be systemic type of type of uh, recommendations, things that we haven't maybe done that could be done at certain areas. However, uh, my understanding is there will be a short list of some that they identify uh, would be uh, potentially up there for uh, some type of a recommendation. Um, and based on a map they've shown us, um, very uh, basically from Pawnee and 183rd over to 135th has been highlighted um, with no explanation. Uh, they, has, they basically have preliminary given us a map with red marks on it that to me suggests that they would have potentially recommendations for those areas. And one of those was not the intersection per se, but Pawnee from 183rd over to 135th. Nice. Hi. How many houses on Pawnee houses, duplexes, did we approve between 183rd and 163rd? <coughs> uh, uh, on Pawnee? Um, From the <coughs> so Big Long's got 29 and Got Trails in has uh, 200 lots. There's 80 duplexes and 120. <coughs> so we have um, 109 duplexes and 120 single family homes. Between 187 and 167? And 167, wait, no, that's 250. East. No, yeah, I'm thinking east. Oh, well, excuse me, oh, 167, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, so there's 212, so that's, <laughs> I got wrong numbers. Um, 212 lots, so I think there, there's a 60-40 split on that one. Were you, do you just want to do or do you want to follow? No, no, I'm saying the studies that they're doing, does that take into consideration, hey, we're about to, we have 212 lots right here well, that we've got, we're building on. We've got 167th and Colwich. We've got how many lots going there on Kelsey's development? Uh, so, Kelsey's the development, um, there's 212 on 167th, 23rd, and there's 44 off Goddard, the uh, Prairie Travelers, and there's another, uh, I, I don't know how many of them the trail there. So we've, got, 80, so. we've got a development going on 167th, We've got Harbor Creek. We're moving into the next final stage, um, and then we've got uh, 199th and Pawnee, and then we have 215th and Pawnee. And I guess just take that into note. We've got a lot of homes going all along Pawnee there, and I hate to say it, but it's going to be one of the kids' fault. They're gonna, they're not going to pay attention, yeah. and they're going to drive through. And then we're all going to be upset that we have a real situation on our hands. And so I know, I know it's not your fault why it hasn't been happening, but all it takes is just we need to just, we don't need a full light even there. I mean, we just need to stop and just take control of all that. Yes. And, so, and I, I will note, yes, we are looking at that. In fact, our CIP that we introduced, again, a little further away from you right now, but uh, in, added into our <coughs> CIP uh, this year, if approved, I, I got it. August will be approved. But if approved, uh, we have a project on Pawnee starting at 135th, right. going 151st, and that the idea would carry it at least to 167th when it would uh, carry it out. Um, and I will note, uh, uh, you may have already <coughs> talked to Harlan, but um, we're very careful about adding or changing uh, intersection uh, controls. For example, going from a two-way two stop to a four-way stop, Sounds simple enough, but all of a sudden you have all these people who are very familiar with Pawnee suddenly coming to a stop that they never have to in their entire life, and they are going to run it the first couple of times. Yeah. And that is something that, so one thing we will never do is, for example, take a two-way stop north-south and make it and switch it to east-west. You're just begging for trouble. Um, the other thing we're very, very careful about is adding a stop sign to condition onto a road that has traditionally been in an urban area uh, or suburban area um, right. through fair. So uh, we do look at those. I'm very anxious to see what the recommendations are from a third party independent audit 
uh, to see what they have recommended and then hopefully uh, move forward with uh, additional projects. Um, I'm also hoping, I'm a fan, I, am, I, I don't know what you guys think about them, but I'm a fan of roundabouts. Yes. Um, and uh, we have tried in the past to get them unsuccessfully. Um, I think we have a commission now that um, would back that. So I'm also hoping in the near future we'll have uh, roundabouts in our CIP as well. Uh, they are great intersection control me me uh, measures. Um, so, um, and that's, you know, as long as you don't use them too frequently, too, you know, right. they're great, a great intersection control measures, so I would see those. Harlan? Uh, does it take a study to get an advance warning sign to say, like, at least their 183rd and Pawnee that, uh, you know, uh, 183rd Street traffic does not stop, it does not stop. That and, does can, not can that be added? Yes, that is something without, we can look at. In a, you know, advance of the stop sign that we have there from both sides, you can... To advise or remind the young driver that traffic does not stop. Harlan brings up a very good point. Anything of uh, advanced yeah, warning. Yeah, and the flashing great. stop signs, or is that yeah. is that not? I'm sorry. Flashing stop signs. That uh, we're very careful about the flashing stop signs. Um, I always use this as an example. Um, when you look at something that is constantly flashing. Um, whether it be like we use red balls on top of the signs or you may have seen them around the town a little bit maze like some where you do the LEDs around the stop signs. They look <laughs> great and they get your attention for a little while. But if you're a familiar driver, like for example, I, yeah, I drive a maze, my kids go to maze schools, I drive up there all the time, I don't see the flashing lights anymore, day or night. It just, yeah. it, so I'm a fan of, for example, like hawk signals where it only flashes when someone's about to cross the cross the crosswalk. That gets your attention because it's not on all the time. <laughs> but Harlan's right, we can definitely look at advanced signs and advanced warning advisory signs. The other thing is very surprising that we've learned, um, and it's very simple, um, placing re red reflective tape on the stop sign posts underneath the stop sign um, actually is shown to have a 67% reduction in crash rates. Um, I, that came to us straight from KDOT, um, so I, I don't, I, I hesitate to question it, but that seems really odd, but we just put some of that tape up on 21st and 167th uh, not too long ago, and uh, it's, uh, the, they have studies that show the reduction there, and that's a very simple thing that you can do, right. um, that, that we've done and we'll look at doing as well. Uh, so sometimes it's, it's the simplest <coughs> measures are, are the biggest improvements. Right. Okay. Well, thanks for addressing you know. that. Yeah. Yes. So back, yeah, so back to this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do I have a motion to send the letter? I make a motion to send a letter of support. Second. Motion by Sarah, second by Aubrey. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. This is item H8. This is the city treasurer. I'm just going to turn this over to uh, our business manager. Thank you. With Imagine IT, uh, Andrew. Uh, he, he's my primary contact there who we work with for all of our software support and any, any of our uh, hardware replacements as well. Oh, I can't move that up, can I? Sorry, that's all right. Okay, Council Mayor. Uh, this proposal is for improve security at the, city, uh, at the city in regards to their cybersecurity. So <coughs> what, I'm not gonna get into the details for uh, reasons I don't want our tools to get out or whatnot for proprietary reasons and for no, security reasons. But basically what's happening right now in the industry is we're starting to see layers of security come into, uh, into play. So what's happening is uh, hackers will get into that first layer and get into the whole network. So what is now needed is layered security. So last year we went through the process of getting multi-factor authentication for the city, um, but now we need that, that second and third layer of security uh, on the back end. So essentially what that means is if a hacker were to breach that first layer, right, they can get into the network. What we want to do is implement increased security. So if they do get in there, we have that second level and that third level that can go ahead and knock out whatever's, whatever's attacking and, and clean it all up and isolate it and just clean it up and get rid of it. Uh, I think that like a football team, okay, you have your defensive line, uh, they get past the first line of defense, you 
You got your linebackers there. They got past the second line of defense. You got your safeties there. That's what we're trying to establish. So uh, it's a, it's right now your security is um, we had just haven't increased the security platform other than MFA for a few years now. So now what we want to do is get that next level of security for the city. Uh, the cost associated with that is just an up upfront cost of deploying all of our tools, getting some training, and then there's a recurring cost of just under thirteen hundred dollars. Uh, so this is kind of lining up with cyber insurance and best practices as well, along with some compliance. So insurance companies are realizing what it takes to protect companies so they don't have to pay out ransomware fees. And so what they're doing is beefing up their requirements, and which in turn goes back to the people that need cyber coverage. And so that's really, so there's a, a best practice piece, there's a cyber insurance piece, and there's a compliance piece. That's all what we're trying to propose here for approval is covering. And then again, what it does is puts layer of protection in your cybersecurity environment, your cyber environment. Protect your servers, protect your users. Obviously there's a lot of, you guys protect a lot of people's information, right? Uh, and so downtime on that is great, as long as, along with reputational risk as well. Um, Matt, as far as the financial to this, we build in budget for upgrades to our infrastructure, electronic infrastructure every year. I don't know that I necessarily built this much into it, but we have reserves available to use this year, and it will be included in the budget going forward. So what, we're what, I, what I'm saying is I, I, I budget things. We're good. We're good, yes. Okay. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> I can go into much more detail. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, do we have any questions? I mean, is there any concerns from any of you I mean, guys? Yes, yeah. I, I have. I have. I went to a finance conference a couple weeks ago, and uh, we heard from. Uh, I sat through a presentation from another city in the Wichita metro area about, and he was showing us just the amount of attacks they're getting daily on their system, sure. Sure. and it, it scared the heck out of me. So, so, I mean, so you're in favor of? I'm in favor of this. Sure. There have been several cases of ransomware attacks throughout the state recently. There, you know, they're, they're, you know, from what I've heard from Andrew as well as other people in the know, Kansas is the prime target right now for okay. these type of attacks. Yeah. And, and, and hackers are evolved, so sure. they go after specific people. Like as an example, Matt, because of his title, he deals with certain information that if they get into his stuff or you know whoever that that's really important information that they can get and then try to hire somewhere back um, so there's 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 a lot of risk and it's not a onesie twosie it's that it's organized crime essentially is what it is right now so you have offices that are doing this hacking the first level and then they actually stop sell that to different hacker organizations and then they breach the rest of it and then they lock you out encrypt you and ransomware you so that's kind of how that all works. Okay. Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> Any more? You okay to work? I make a motion that we approve the H8. Okay, motion by Brent. Second. Second by Keith. All in favor say aye. Aye. Aye, aye. okay. Thank you. Yeah. 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 <laughs>
proposal, and this means that if he was chosen, then the league will work with John Deardorff to fulfill the terms of the contract under the RFP. Uh, five bids were received by the deadline for submission of proposals. Uh, Deardorff Consulting LLC uh, proposed 14,000 <coughs> plus travel and miscellaneous expense. Baker Tilly, <coughs> and I'm not sure how that's pronounced. For Chow and Krause, uh, was twenty six thousand nine hundred and fifty. Transreach Talent LLC twenty two thousand five hundred. Government Professional Solutions twenty two thousand five hundred. And the Arnold Group uh, came up with thirty percent of the first year total compensation. Um, I did not uh, include these in your packet, but they were sent out, and I believe you all received uh, those proposals. Um, I did create a, uh, it's not in here, <laughs> a comparison of the cities, but there was really just too much information to include in the, uh, for a breakdown. Um, but Deardorff Consulting uh, was the lowest bid for 14000 um, which was 8500 below the next lowest bid of 22500 uh, he has 40 years of experience in local government and in the state of Kansas. Uh, he's conducted over 20 city administrator manager searches in the Kansas area over the past four years while still employed full-time and since retirement in 2020. He has also served as the interim city administrator in two Kansas communities and recently completed a six months tenure as the interim executive director of the Kansas League of Municipalities. So it is recommended that the City Council select one firm to provide the requested services, reject all proposals, or table for clarification of information submitted in a proposal to investigate the ability of a firm to meet the required needs of the project. Okay. Uh, I will note that you all in your agenda packet, that chart that Terry prepared was included in there showing the breakdown of cost and credentials and whatnot. Um, John Deardoff, I spoke with him, I got a referral to him from a buddy out in Garden City, the wife of the city attorney out there. They had used him for a, a high-level city position and were very pleased with him. He's got the unique experience of having been a city manager at multiple stops including most recently in Hutch, before he retired. Um, Baker Tilly is another uh, reputable, uh, really good search firm with a lot of experience, specifically with um, uh, municipalities. Um, they're a little bit, they're on the higher side as far as cost is concerned. But in looking through their packet, there have been a number of cities in Kansas who have contracted with Baker Tilly. Uh, Transreach, I didn't see any indication in their proposal that they have any experience with regard to working with municipalities on searches, a lot of tech, a lot of manufacturing. I just think that searching for a, a government official, it's just, it's a very unique uh, process is a very unique position, it's very different from working in a private sector. And so I think that we should be looking at somebody that has specific experience working with cities or counties or other government agencies. And then obviously government professional solutions and the arm group, they both have experience with municipalities. Arm groups, the local group, they're either based out of which cars in the UK. Well, I guess when it comes to the financial sense of it all, geared off is the cheapest, and they will also he will also be getting help from the Kansas League of municipalities, which um, I believe that the league said that they weren't capable of doing it themselves right now, but they were going to help geared off. I think. With Deardorff, we not only get an experienced person for the cheapest bid, but we also get 
the assistance from the Kansas League. So I think it's a no-brainer. I think it would be uh, foolish to table this conversation because uh, it would be a disservice to the community when you get moving on finding somebody. So I think if we do anything tonight, we just need to move forward. Um, uh, is there any comment to when, that? When I read through the proposals, um, I liked, like Ryan said, the fact that Deerhoff has served in a position that he is working to fill because I can go hire an accountant who looks good on the books, but I've never been an accountant, so I don't know the day-to-day -day functions and all the things. So that, I think, is a big bonus. And the price tag is a lovely bonus. So. I think him being a local guy, too, in mm -hmm. Kansas, I mean, the most likely candidates are going to be the ones who have ties to Kansas yeah. or who are already here. And he's going to know the lay of the land and be able to tap on some shoulders. And that was one of the things that he talked to me about when I initially spoke to him. You know, at that time, the lady was doing their own searches, but because of conflicts of interest, and given that all municipalities were members of the league, they couldn't be going and tapping on the shoulders of any of their members and employees to say, hey, uh, Mr. Manager and Andover, do you have any interest in this position in God? They couldn't do that. Okay. And okay. so, right, and, and, and you know, he's got more flexibility to, to be able to use those sorts of things. Um, I guess, Terry, the only question I have is, if we choose to move forward with John, um, how's the soonest, when's the soonest that I guess me, you, and Ryan, I'd like to have a phone call on when he's going to be able to get that. I mean, how fast are we going to be able to move? What I was what I was thinking is I could draw up a contract uh, for approval of the next meeting, and I was going to call John to see if he could come. I like that. Here that that would be awesome. Meeting. Yeah, I like that. Okay. So Does that work for you? Yep. Does that work for everybody? Yep. Good. Yeah. 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 You won't be here. And this guy but I, I trust y'all can handle it. Okay. Uh, do I have any more comments? I mean, I think the odds of finding somebody that experienced who's also been in the position and happens to be the lowest bid, it's a, it's a no brainer. So, I think it's good with the lowest bidder. Okay, do I have a motion? Or we'll make a motion. Motion by Keaton. Second. Second by Sarah. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Let's do it. Come on, Peter, track. No, nope. this is a real high tech here. Oh, yeah, so Public Works has a, well, the city has a John Deere 6415 tractor that we use for mowing and other miscellaneous tax, tasks. Um, we took it to Prairie Land Partners to be serviced recently and while they were servicing, they found some metal shavings and a differential. So um, instead of just having it repaired, it needed to come in and get additional spending authority to have it done. Um, the known cost of the repairs is $9,113.77. Total cost of repairs right now is unknown until teardown diagnosis is complete, but should not exceed $15,000. We're requesting spending approval of $15,000 to repair John Deere 6415 tractor. Final cost will be determined during turnout down diagnosis, as I just said. Um, the total cost should not exceed $15,000. Be allocated 100% to equipment reserve streets for repair and maintenance. Equipment, um, no legal. Any questions? Is Collins a lot to vote if he's wearing a John Deere hat? That's like an obvious. <laughs> <laughs> can, you, can, you come, can you come fix that? Or he needs to step out for a We need it bad. I didn't even get to that. The second I saw his hat, I was waiting. Well, no. You don't get the hat for 15000 Is it in? I was going to say, yeah. Well, I don't know. They don't give us a hat anymore. They only give you a hat when they sell you one, huh? Uh, yeah, and, yeah, and you don't want to buy green anymore, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to go. Make your opinion. It's okay. <laughs> uh, we don't on our farm anymore. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, but anyway, it's a good tractor and he's repaired. <laughs> asking for it. Uh, the money. Spending authority not to exceed $15,000. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 
I make a motion to approve the repair of the 6416 John Deere tractor. Cost not to exceed 15000 Second. Motion by Sarah, second by Aubrey. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Thank you, Council. I think we are all <laughs> That's what it is. Aubrey Marion, City Council. <laughs> Do you guys want to take a 15 minute break? No. no. <laughs> Go ahead. This is item H11. This is a letter of support for the moderate income housing grant. <clears throat> Quick background the American Rescue Plan of Arco stimulus package was passed on March 11, 2021. The stimulus package provides grant opportunities to the state in the form of um, some of them in the form of moderate income housing grants. These modified grants have a minimum amount of $650,000 and a maximum of $3.5 million. Uh, Rick Warner is actually looking at requesting an MIH financing in the form of $2 million <clears throat> to build multifamily apartment building in the Goddard Genesis development area. The apartment development would consist of about 100 dwelling units, 50 one-bedroom units, and, 20, and 50 two-bedroom units. The resolution attached uh, was drafted by Pulsinelli Law Firm, representing the developer, and approved by Robert Cloaking, Dahl, and Morris Lake. The city council is considering if they want to approve the resolution for the moderate income housing grant. There's no cost to the city. The grant would be for $2 million to build an apartment complex in the Starbond Genesis development area. This resolution does not guarantee the grant, only shows support for total proposed construction cost for this development would be around $15 million. Now, this is the proposed area for the multifamily development. This is the softball diamonds and the baseball diamonds over here. This is in the uh, bigger Star Starbond Genesis development area. Um, the pickleball and sand sports are over here in this area, and the 6S restaurant bar will be over there. Financially, non legal is approved as the form. It is recommended that the governing body both either one, approve the mayor to sign the resolution for the MIH grant, or two, deny the signing of the resolution for the MIH grant, or three, table the agenda item. Uh, Paulson Nelly couldn't be here today, neither could Rick Warner, but Paulson Nelly said if you guys have any questions, that I could call him, and then he could answer those questions. Okay, so just to be clear, okay. no. Um, just to be clear, this doesn't approve apartment complexes that we're doing, and just like what we did with the other thing, yeah. this is just allowing um, Polsonelli and Mr. Warner mm -hmm. to submit the application oh, to the point. state. Yeah. So then I can send the letter and sign it. But there's multiple steps that happen. Yeah. This is there's multiple steps that will happen before any. I mean, this is just to say, hey, can we get this grant? Right. Can this grant? Yes. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. But should we call Rick Warner just to say hi? If you want. <laughs> 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 I was calling. Who's up to? Okay. Do we do we have any questions? No? Okay. Any questions? Keaton? Aubrey? No, sir. Do I have a motion? I have a motion to approve the IMIH grant for the mayor to sign the resolution. Motion by Brent. Second. Second by Sarah. All in favor say aye. 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 Good. Very good. Okay, governing body comments. Keep over there. Well, hell, hold on. I promised Aubrey last time that I let yeah, her Yeah, Aubrey start. Yeah. Go ahead, Aubrey. Yeah, Aubrey's always upset that you always beat him. I'm going to take speaker. notes and then so make sure. Right now, but. <laughs> uh, well, it's good to be able to fill all the meetings. Um, I think everything's going, going well. Um, I love the fact that we're having open talks. Yeah, I love, I love the fact that we can debate things. And then uh, the vision, you know, that's, that's foremost what I recommend. You know, we, things we're making decisions on right now, we need to look, what does it look like 10, 15, 20 years? That's, that's the whole mission here, right? So the positive growth, um, I'm glad everybody's here and has a good crowd. And that's really all I got to say. Oh yeah, okay, so here we go. Let me see, last week we went into uh, North Park. We saw the building. What happened to it? 
What happened to which building? North Park. Did you find out about the wells, the water wells, or anything on it? Uh, no, I mean, we haven't gotten into details of it. I mean, we went out and looked at it on Friday. There's a horse stable that looks, <coughs> a horse barn, I should say, that looks relatively intact, but we'd have to get some architectural review on that. There is a water well that has water there. I don't think it would function, though, for serving residential uses. They could function for commercial Was use. Is there a problem with that? The land or? A problem with the land. How about the auction? Did you? No, we're starting to put together a compilation of everything that wants to be that we would want to bring on the June fifth meeting for okay. council to consider to auction off. Or we have a bunch of rusty fencing, and there's a smaller building um, that could be potentially demolished. But just sort of a cleanup effort on the north land to get it start prepped for future development for the north part. But we haven't got any bids or anything put together or anything. Right now, we're just putting together for itemizing what could be potentially bid and sold for, as scrap or somebody to come out and haul it off to get rid of some of the fencing. But that would be a consideration for City Council on June 5th if they want to move forward. Do you want some of the fencing? Like a Mad Max car? No, no. It's going to be to auction it off to try to remember the money oh. to build that fence space for that house. Oh, yeah. Okay. That we said that we yeah. built. Yeah. There's a private residence next to the North Park land, and there's a, an agreement between the city and that resident that we would build a fence around this property. It was sold by Mr. Jim Fouts as a private resident, and so in that agreement, we said we would put a fence surrounding it. So we haven't acted on that yet, but some of the thought was perhaps if we had some salvage from demolishing the smaller building and the recent, you know, and the selling of the scrap fencing, we could probably, you know, portion some of that cost towards the building fence, but we don't know what that looks like, and this is something that has to be considered by council, you know, publicly during a, a regular denial. And then I have one other thing, is, remember this house back here? That really bad, ugly one? What did we find out about this ugly building right over here? <coughs> so, the one um, that you can see the shed is falling apart on the side of it? That everybody looks at. <clears throat> so, um, what Council Member Trailer is referring to is the Kimple property that we demolished because obviously it's unfit for habitation. Um, there's a property on Main Street that's starting to be uh, in a state of dilapidation and decline, and perhaps be classified as blighted. Um, our code really lays out blight and unfit habitation, particularly as it pertains to dwelling units. So Kimball's was more of a slam dunk situation. This one might be a little bit more complicated, but we'd have to look at it. Um, I don't know if necessarily we want to lay out. The roof looks like it's getting ready to cave in on it. Are you talking about north of 4th Street, north of Cedar? I don't you know. know if we want to identify the property right now. They're in a public meeting, but there okay. is potentially some code violations that might be able to be applied to a certain commercial property on Main Street, and then we'd have to look into that. As mentioned, the code for the city <coughs> is drafted with um, uh, favoritism towards residential and dwelling units as it pertains to unfit habitation, not, not as heavily towards commercial, so we'd have to look at what that would look like for a code violation. But in terms of blight, it certainly would be qualified as a blighting impact on the city. All right, that's all I have. I'll ask about it again next week, <laughs> two weeks from now. King? Yeah, um, kind of a long long meeting tonight, but thank you guys for, for being here and, and those of you that stuck it out. We always we, we really do always appreciate that. Um, I think that we're starting to get moving on some things that have needed to happen in Goddard for a very long time. Um, and I'm very excited to see where this where this takes us in the future. Um, so, um, you know, as, as we get through this summer, we see some of these repairs that should have happened long ago. Um, I think it's just going to continue to make Goddard look better. Uh, it, it's going to make Goddard, uh, it's, it's going to help bring in businesses and, and ultimately it's going to take Goddard to where we need to get uh, to where we're a community that's thriving and not just one that's surviving and, and fighting for survival. Uh, so I look forward to that. Um, that being said, <laughs> listen, this cup was so pretty this morning that I spilled it. So the daughter. Why'd you say that? Oh, no, don't tell my daughter don't knocked it out. Me. My daughter <laughs> knocked it out of my hand. But anyways, <laughs> Cofalo uh, did their grand opening this weekend, and it was an incredible turnout. And um, Jeremy uh, is is just an incredible business owner. I've loved getting to, to visit with him. So if you haven't stopped in there, make sure that you do. 
Um, and that carries into Main Street Market. We're less than a month away. And I'm so stoked. We have uh, over 30 vendors signed up as a whole, uh, but we will have uh, at least 30 that will be at the first market. Um, and and I'm, yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm getting really excited just thinking about that. Um, Goddard businesses are going to start seeing exponential growth. And, and I'm very, very excited for the opportunity that Main Street has. Um, as we continue to grow over the next few years, I wanna make sure that we start from the inside out and we don't just destroy the businesses we already have because we have some incredible business owners in this city. Uh, so we're gonna take care of them and then we're gonna boom around them. And, and I look forward to uh, hopefully being a part of that. Sarah? Just to clarify, no babies were harmed in the spilling of the coffee. Um, I'm excited with the progress we've made in the last four months. I think we've come together and the council and the staff, we've done a lot of hard work and it's exciting to see things actually happening and getting done. Um, I want to thank the staff for working on the road projects and figuring out what we need and figuring out how we can get the geo bonds and all of that to get our infrastructure Thanks. So that's all I got. I'd like to tag on the end of that. Um, as you know, uh, their elections are coming up this year. And we had a lot, several months ago, we had a lot of participation here with people with different opinions and enthusiasm, energy. Uh, I just encourage you, you know, people watching online and stuff, uh, I encourage you to run for office. If you think you can help make a difference with this community, open arms. Let's do it. We want new faces, we want new ideas of growth. Um, I just recommend that, you know, um, if you're thinking about running, step forward, let's do it. Love to see you on the ballot. But that's what we need as a growing community. We need more ideas. We need more people with different perspectives instead of the old and the way it's happened several years. So I just bring in energy and uh, just encourage folks to, to step up and come forward. Love to see that. Um, community and garden, we're getting quotes on that. I already talked to you about that. Um, uh, bank movement, we're doing good on that. Good. It, 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 it's on my to do list. Okay. Sure. But, but we're, we're working on that. Um, uh, I want to see this bond get done. I want to see this road improvements get done. This is going to be huge for the city of God. Huge. And uh, I, I can't wait to where we can actually turn some results and start showing the people. We keep talking about it and government moves slow, even though we're, it doesn't look like we're doing anything right now, but we're actually getting a lot of the, the paperwork and all of the procedural methods done. So um, I'm excited to see what we're doing here on this bench turn into physical proof that what we're doing actually is good for this community and uh, I can't wait to show the rest of the community what, what's going on so um, uh, that being said we have an executive session and I need a motion I have a motion to recess into an executive session under KSA 7543191 to discuss personnel matters involving a city employee to include the city attorney, police chief, and the city clerk. We will reconvene the open meeting in the city council chamber at 10 p.m. after a seven minute break. Motion by Sarah. Second. Second, Second. Second. by Brent. All in favor say aye. 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 aye.
session. There's a second one, right? And uh, we have a second executive session. Do I have a motion? We have a motion to recess into executive session yeah. under KSA 754319B2 for consolation with an attorney on matters that would be deemed privileged in attorney client relationship to include the city attorney, police chief, and city clerk. We will reconvene the open meeting in the city council chambers at, can we just say 10 o'clock? Yeah, no. Or do you need longer? No, that's
No, those can be reported. Let the record show that there is no binding action taken during executive session. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I have a motion to adjourn. Motion by Sarah, second by Brent. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay.